Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, this is an official translation of the Women's Candidates Tournament, one of the biggest and the most important tournaments of the year. I am Almira Skripchenko, joined here by Igor Natav, chess Hello. grandmaster, Hello. and of course, one of the former trainers of Timur Rajavov, but you still help him as a coach, and you will tell us more uh, well during the round. Okay, what I am allowed to say, I will say. Yes, this is important, okay. of course, but I wanted to talk to you about the psychological di course. dimension, the preparation, what the players have to go through, how they're managing the candidates' tournament. It's very important. So um, let's have a look maybe at the playing hall, because I think that the players are already ready to start their games. Uh, on your screen, you can see Lei Tinji. Uh, she's waiting for her opponent, and Hampi Conero is walking. She's not sitting down. I remember that... Um, David Bronstein, he had the ritual. Uh, he was sitting down before 10 minutes. 15, like, I heard. Like, oh, you heard 15, I like for 15. me. So, okay, this is the legend then. But he was sitting down and he wanted to get into full concentration, like in sort of trance, where the world ceased to exist. Uh, they're waiting for um, their opponents, Muzichuk sisters. Uh, Lei Tinji is playing against uh, Maria Muzichuk, and Hampi Conero is playing against uh, Anna Muzichuk. As you can see, we have two uh, personalities present in the playing hall, uh, Dana Reznitsa Ozola and uh, Zhu Chen. They will make the symbolic first moves on two boards. So mm -hmm. Zhu Chen, first of all, is a former world champion. Yeah, yeah. They, are all, they, they are both from my generation. I mean, when I was playing very actively, they were also playing very actively both, and, uh, and uh, okay, I know them very well from this time. Well, uh, she also holds a position of feed the treasurer, so actually she's... Actually, you was also the same <laughs> Yes, we also, so. we played many, many tournaments, and I I, as I remember, one of the first tournaments that I played in China, we spent like a week with Zhu Chen in Shanghai exploring uh, the wonderful city, so Maria Muzichuk appeared um, on your screens, uh, and Dana Reznice was Ozola, first of all, she is a deputy chair on um, uh, of FIDE, yes, management board, because uh, they changed a little bit uh, the way they called it, and she is also the ECU deputy president, so, uh, and strong grandmaster herself, because not so and long before, ago. she had also some uh, title in Latvia. I mean, of course, uh, she is a former finance minister. She uh, was representing her political party for so many years. But what I wanted to say that not so long ago, she, when she played in the Olympics, she beat Hu Yifan. Was and absolute uh, number one. I mean, I, well, there is Judith all the time. Of so, course. But Judith stopped to play sometimes. So Anna Muzichuk um, is in the playing hall. Um, so the round is about to start. Uh, the chief arbiter, Stefani Skaff, um, well, reminds the players about, I think, the time control. We will see it uh, with you as well. I think Stefan was the, the chief arbiter of the World Championship of Carlsen against uh, maybe Caruana. I'm not like, well, we'll have to check about it. You know, uh, I was more concentrating. Memory, on I may be <laughs> mistaking. I was more concentrating on the history Me, of the I women's candidates. I am always concentrated on arbiters, <laughs> on, uh, on things like this, you know, all the nearby. So Dana Reznitz was always making the first move uh, in the game uh, between Hampi Conero and Anna Muzichuk. What move? was made on the board. Do By we have... Uh, yes. I, I didn't check what she plays, but I would say D4. Because you know that now uh, you put... So you see they changed the move. I'm not sure if the player will make the same move on the board. Can we see it? Is it E4 or D4? Uh, if we can have a closer look. There is no delay huh? from what I saw. Yes. There is, uh, it's uh, completely live. And... Okay, so there is not going to be the second first move, or we haven't seen it. <laughs> we have seen nothing. <laughs> not one ball, not the second ball. <laughs> is uh, ah, D4, you see? D4. Okay. Ah, I, see, I think I will be in good form, if I guess already the first move. So D4. I, um, but uh, it's not a surprise uh, on Humpy's behalf, because uh, that's the move she uses very often. I've played a few games against her and she has a very solid, a very well structured repertoire. So I'm actually curious to see what Anna Muzikchuk prepared. Yeah, because Anna, from what I remember, uh, she's used to play a lot of things, really a lot of things. And uh, I don't know if she changed with the years, but at my, my time she was playing 
lot of things and sometimes dubious things, but very tricky. And I don't know what will be our strategy, I so, mean, because as Igor, you said, she's solid. Let have a look. You said after D4, you was informed, but D takes C4, it was the first love of my life. The Queen's Gambit accepted was the uh, was my my main opening um, okay. weapon, you know, Me, when uh, I was playing the French Championship among uh, men. <laughs> ah, yes. So I know this opening very well. Let's see. Knight of three is a very interesting move. I know the move. opening too. I made some training sessions with Yuri Yakovic on this exactly. many years ago. And uh, he teach me the, the Queen's Gambit uh, accepted. But I played only once in my life. I prefer King's Indian, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I understand this. King's Indian, I was playing when I was a kid. And I was sacrificing rooks, bishops, you know, and everything. And then I was counting down the material, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> So I just wanted to say knight f3 is a very interesting move. Igor, can you yes, show? Yes. So for example, if you play a very natural move e3, just before, just go back. We'll there is e5, yeah? e5, of course. So it's just to avoid this variation. Uh, knight f3 is to get this line, but in order to prevent e5. Mm -hmm. Or this is nothing like... Yeah, but I remember I, I am looking some old game by Mike Serve, and he, 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 he says these things. I mean, he has some gom Queen's Gambit accepted, mm -hmm. and he, he, he says this little uh, detail. And, uh, but it's very important in, in order to understand the opening, uh, sometimes, and the choice like of your opponent while you prepare. It's very, to, 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 it's very important to understand those little details on knight of three, knight of six. Especially, yeah, three. the move order at this level is extremely important, and we should not... Uh, uh, for, forget to mention that they have all a very structured team with grandmasters, coach uh, to help them, and uh, they are making quite a serious work in the opening stage. So, for the moment, we don't have the names of their coaches and seconds. Uh, they haven't been revealed. Uh, and we didn't see them at the yes. opening ceremony. <laughs> I was watching. Are, are their <laughs> colleague grandmaster? No, nobody. <laughs> we were observing. Everybody we're, hidden. Hidden. We were like the secret agents. You know, we wanted to get the information because nowadays even a little piece of information might be crucial because you will study immediately the games of the second. You will see what is the opening choice, like, uh, uh, well, especially, for example, against this line. What I wanted to say that um, this is a slight surprise for me. So if Anna has chosen the Queen's Gambit accepted, then she accepts accepts in the Queen's Gambit accepted that after D takes C5 here she is playing only for two results because after D takes C5 you will have to trade Queens and uh, this position is very well known and yeah, it's okay. very unpleasant for for black to play with those manner of knight d2 knight exactly. d3 exactly let's show it let's show it and okay, I'm now, now they are there yeah okay continue Sorry. no no just let's you can start by showing D takes yeah, C5 no, 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 yeah she was speaking about this position mm -hmm. Uh, no, 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 after E6, after yes, of course, it's possible. After castle? Yes, after right castle, now. A6, yes, D takes C5 here. It's one, actually, one of the main lines. And, and now black can, 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 can choose between uh, bishop takes C5 mm -hmm. and queen take and uh, queen take D1. And we were, at, at my time, we were not sure what was the best. Uh, now, I'm, now probably it, uh, it has been... Uh, but, uh, well, I was always, almost always trying to play Queen D1 here, just uh, to show you how unpleasant it yeah, might but, uh, be. Uh, ah, I, we are not I have my favorite have... problem. I, I, I lost the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, will, we are going to like to... So let, let me... Yes, we will fix this uh, no, 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 in no, a no, second. No, 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 it's fine. I will it's find fine, it. yes. It's not yet, but... Ah, it's on the other screen. Yes. Ah, sorry. So, ah, okay, okay, <laughs> there are two screens. It went from... Okay, okay, I understand. I have three screams home, uh, so I know. I did not know it was going on those things. Okay. okay, so, the, well, the first day is anyway, yeah, it's, it's very ca chaotic, yes. Yes, so, yes. so let's see, uh, Queen D1 here. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rook D1, Rook D1 Bishop C5. Bishop C5, of course, and uh, White has, well, somewhat of, well, if several continuations, but you can start with Knight Bd2. There is something with Bishop E2 back, Knight yes. D2, and mm -hmm. Bishop F3, also, or yes, Knight B3. I don't know when exactly, because uh, 
we, we are here with pure talent. We don't have our computers. We don't have uh, analysis. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just my memories, like in the old days. No, you place, will enjoy, I feel. We will, no, well, but that's... <laughs> Everything the, approximate. That's the <laughs> point. No, but that's the point. Because I think, you know, that everyone is sitting at home with their computer and they can have the computer evaluation anyway. But I think we are doing it in real time. But like, we, we, like have we, were as well, we have as well the, the engines, but it's so far that we, we, don't, see the, we <laughs> don't see the evaluation on the line. <laughs> so don't worry, it well, will be by our head. It happened to me anyway during the <laughs> candidates tournament during Madrid, like okay. everyone was seeing the evaluation and I was half blind already <laughs> at you the beginning of the tournament. You have to have 10 out of 10 and to look like laser. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like we were playing a game. But but it's good. It's, it's Igor, fine. please tell me, for example, if you would look at this position with black, like wouldn't you feel it like a small discomfort? Or do you think it's enough? No, because of course you know you know 10, 10, 10, 10 15 moves from there. At their level, they know exactly where to put the pieces, which plan, and again against each plan for white, where to put pieces. This is the basic basic thing. So I would not be worried because I would have made my own homework. But you I think they did the same. Like psychologically, for example, for me it's very difficult. And also coming from a player who I used to play King Cindy, and where you're always fighting. For the initiative. Yeah, but it doesn't come, Detective 5. I know what we will yes. ask if they play Detective 5. It doesn't come. And when it comes, you have one, two small ideas. And in, okay, from, from, from one, I mean, from one level, from, from one level, you don't wait such things because uh, they will try to, 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 to have a normal game and they will play normal chess. Only weak players against them, you have to ask your, those questions. I mean, when there is a big uh, difference yes. between levels. But uh, here she doesn't mind. I mean, if, she, if white plays for, do, uh, I mean, if, if white um, will, will try to press, she, she will probably hold, and that's it. If she makes draw, she makes draw. In fact, she thinks there are many lines like this, like Berlin, like this. Um, now there is this yes, line that they play, they, they, they the play a lot, a lot, this position as well, nowadays. They play a lot, um, it's there, Tarash, I mean, this, and this is in very good shape nowadays. A knight f3, d5, knight c3, c5, c take d5, and this mm -hmm. game now, they play this one, and now they take. Yes, queen d4. And uh, after queen d4, they play this, and they like to play this end game. And it's the same, they play for two results, but if they have 90% to achieve the first one, which is a draw, they will deal with it. I mean, they play like this, this, and uh, knight g5, bishop e6. This end game, it, it's exactly the same like what you ask, or like in this Berlin end mm -hmm. game. Of Berlin end game, it may be a no, bit a tricky because uh, the pounds on the, the, yes. the, 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 the queen side may be tricky. But, but they play for such things now. Nowadays, chess with black, they are able to to play for a no game, like uh, Wesley so likes such such kind of... Uh, of ah, play. it's a very interesting notion because like a no game, I understand. So you, you're trying like to hold with black no matter what because you know that or you're quite confident that especially in a match format, your preparation with white is going to be maybe more efficient. Yeah, and you are more tricky because nowadays you have to be able to play all four first move, knight f3, c4, d4, and... You have uh, you to be universal. Yeah, 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 yeah. you have to be universal, and you will change according to his, opener, uh, his opening, so... So... Okay, uh, she played, just yes. it advanced a bit, b3. she played, she played um, a6, she chose b3. Mm -hmm. So here there was really a bunch of moves, I think seven or eight moves. I mean, it was possible to go a4, to go knight c3, to go queen e2, to go bishop d3, to go bishop b3, and even to sacrifice the pawn with e4, to go d c5. I mean, I am maybe even other moves, like hooky one, I don't <laughs> know. But, <laughs> but actually, you know, this uh, move that you mentioned, uh, one of the last one in this tree of possibilities, the e4, uh, was very popular. Uh, Dubov played it, Yes, I think, lately, lately, and I actually lately. faced it against... Uh, Ivan Chiparinov and I was so surprised because it's it very was aggressive and tricky. it's very aggressive and it's almost like a new philosophical idea in the opening. Well, they give the pawn and they, they get the pawn on e5, they chase your knight and then they say you, you will not castle easily because bishop take h7 check uh, tricks, you know, it's things like this, I mean, 
this yeah i mean uh, but you can also take only four you know there are no you take only four yeah of course because there are many four, possibilities and now they play i forgot what they play they play queen e2 and d5 or rook e1 and there d5 there are many possibilities here because i think it's very dangerous but even like uh i think it's rook e1, it's rook e1 and, and knight d5, f6 yes. and d5 something like this yeah I think d5 looks devastating. No, 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 it's devastating. Yes. So it's here that they have to change uh, the play. I don't know. But can you try here? Uh, I did. I we, actually we don't see nothing. No, <laughs> because in this game, uh, I, I didn't dare to try on e4. I played b5. So maybe, uh, well, if you can push. But for example, it's knight d6 here, yeah, yeah, to win the tempo. Knight d6. To win the tempo, no. Ah, but so d6 c5, it's knight c4. No, uh, no, but. D takes C5, Knight C4, I have Queen A4, and then Queen C4, is it bad or it's like Normally. not so obvious? I simply play maybe Queen Bishop D7 and Bishop C6, or I don't know. No, it doesn't look you that good. You play Knight strong. D7 and then you take the, the pawn, I think. Mm -hmm. Ah, you can simply take it, of you course. No, 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 no. Then you play uh, B5, Bishop mm -hmm. B7. And no, no, no. This, be is, yeah. this is, of course, uh, this is very dubious. Okay, uh, but she chose B3. <laughs> she chose B3. Exactly here. Mm -hmm. It's it's very interesting because, for example, like back to, in the old days, you know, I would say that after b3, the almost um, forced and standard continuation would be to take on d4. You know, you you don't keep the pressure, especially when uh, White played b3 and wants to develop the bishop on b2. You wanted to define the structure in the center immediately because, let's say, after c takes d4 here, how would you take? <coughs> Because it's completely. I would say I would say with the knight if I can do with bishop e2 f3, but mm -hmm. okay b5 bishop e2. Let's see. Yes, because it's completely crazy to take e takes d4 here after uh, after yeah, b3. Yeah, the problem of, of e takes d4 so. is that you you, you create your uh, your uh, isolated pass pawn mm -hmm. and the pawn on b3 is not so recommended there. I mean you have to play more structure with a3 <laughs> knight c3 for bishop a2 if you need. Yes, but I just so wanted to show why like it was yeah, recommended general, after B3 e to take, take D4, some D4, you are right, yes. will not be so good with those B3 structures, I think. So you have, and queen take D4 will not be so great, probably due to the pawn on A6 or the knight. I mean, he may take and play some E5 maybe. And knight c6? No, but this reminds me of uh, some line with the Sicilian. There? It has nothing to do but the transposition. If you take and bishop d7, no, bishop, I would play bishop d7 with the idea of knight c6. We have this in some c3 Sicilians sometimes. Yeah, but maybe here it's, it's possible like this and knight c6 because a6 is useful. I don't know. If bishop b2 put pressure. Well, here I'm not sure because I still remember the game between uh, Ding Nguyen and Hikaru Nakamura and the candidates, the decisive game of the last round. And I remember like when you are given this D5 know. square, it doesn't matter. Like that's, it will be a very long term weakness, like positional you mean weakness. You will go now, now. Uh, yes, these squares and the pawn on e5 is much more vulnerable than on e6. It's uh, so it's it's very um, like fine nuance but i think that you have to take it into consideration because i feel that here the movie five is already very responsible yeah okay i am not so sure that it's that uh, okay it's think? probably no it's probably pressure i agree it's pressure yes so like you have to be yeah, careful yeah, yeah. Yes. in fact you have to be careful because you have may, 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 many dry positions a bit like this but such a thing like a square here it can immediately become a lot yes like snowballing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> In my video games, we say I snowball this position. Yes, because, uh, yes, we will develop this later, but uh, Igor told me that he um, but here, yes, you are is right. very passionate about video games, so I think we could establish a lot of parallels between of uh, chess and so. Especially about the world, like snowballing. <laughs> yeah. So I, I really like this bishop d7 and knight c6 simply to yeah, finish the development. Especially yes. now the, the move a6 will be extremely useful to prevent all kind of knight b5. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, so let's see what is the position at the board right now because look at the at the players, Igor, because you know the posture sometimes can tell she, you... She's yes, trying to remember. Anna. A lot. So look at Humpy, she's uh, sitting very calmly, you know, straight, you know, means her respiration is rather regular and uh, she wants to understand where Anna is trying to take her. Okay, where is the, what is the time control? Anna is playing faster, so she is still in her book and 
something very interesting about this position. They play a lot of pro prophylaxy. Look, okay. First of all, knight bd7, which is okay. I mean, uh, sometimes you you may think you go on c6 and you put pressure on d4 mm -hmm. to prevent those knight take d4. We spoke about, you know. And uh, she didn't go there. She went on d7. On d7, it's better placed normally for the bishop on b7, so you are not in the way of the bishop. And um, it looks like you want b5 and bishop b7 and this. And after knight bd7. So also the question is why she didn't play b5 immediately. No, because I think that, um, well, as yeah, we far as... We have to explain, because for the, 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 the viewer, uh, b5 looks normal. I mean, you go bishop e2. Of course, but then and after, after this b3 uh, setup, very often then the c5 square becomes a problem. Like, so you may have a4 as well. And a4. So she's opting for a more uh, flexible Should setup, be knight b7, knight b7, b6, and bishop b7, I what, think. What, what, uh, yeah, what we have to explain is that probably in such positions, <coughs> let's say, uh, when you play this, at some moment this takes c5 will come, I suppose. And, uh, okay, I mean, if they take with the knight. No, I think very often you will, well, it depends on the position, of course, because it but depends it may on be the moment where you're coming. going It to. may be A4 coming, and you are forcing a bit B4. A4 is almost always coming And in now knight BD2. So, and knight C4. You have this square, okay, sometimes you can afford giving this square, sometimes, sometimes not. It's still, uh, still solid, I mean, bishop E7 is coming was possible to play this way, but uh, maybe she didn't want to play with the hole here. And uh, I, I repeat, it's maybe not so clear. I mean, it just, uh, it's not, uh, oh, I have a strong square on c4, it's over. No, 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 no. It's more complicated than this. And uh, because white also has a, a weak square on c3 sometimes, you know, when there is rook c8 and the knight is coming, I mean, you have to also to be careful. I saw a lot of Yes, I was, I was trying games. to remember. Yes, one classical game, I think the way it ended with the combination, I think, uh, uh, of Capablanca, yes, or B2, yes, yeah? yes, 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 so so yes, yes, exactly, yes, with the knight on C3, but yes, it's that's exactly okay. the same structure, okay, so I'm not crazy because I was no, having no, this, is, uh, uh, this exact diagram uh, in my head. Igor, let's have a look just at the um, final moves, so did yeah, you go and for then B6? We, yes? we should not forget one thing, Elmira, is there is a second game yes. as well. Yes, so we are <laughs> going for the second <laughs> that's game. Uh, might be D7. So here, what we spoke about, uh, it's that exactly here, all those small moves like knight bd7, it's already tough moves, I mean, in the probably strategy with the teams because here it's very important where you replace the moves, uh, the, the, the pieces, and you have probably several <coughs> setups. So they choose home, I'm sure, this setup. And yes, because it's more flexible. The same, here B6, it's more flexible against b5. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably sometimes the bishop also can come there. And now she chose also b6. She doesn't want to play b5, not to give any a4, and uh, which would give the c4 square. Okay, I mean, so you see bishop e2 and b6, both moves are a bit prophylactic moves. I mean, they, they, they anticipate b5, and b6, they anticipate a4. So, I mean, they are playing this kind of games. The bishop is coming on b2. And probably one day it will support d takes c5, which will open the diagonal, so we will see. Mm -hmm. But look, we're just at uh, uh, the final position because it's very interesting for yeah, me. Now okay. I feel like a player, so okay, knight e5. I want so to move more. She, she is playing for bishop f3. But knight e5 has become very popular also in many lines of this opening, so they try to put knight e5. So they accept the, knight take yes. and so on. Huh? And uh, this position is considered to be much better for white because like, okay, black course, is almost you have to, always to, to under pressure. To calculate all those knight take e5. Uh, Let's show just knight Let's see how, how do you react. Company, no? Yes, I don't know, but I think it's a very natural what move. I see. And then I mean, what to do? Far, with Knight d5. Eyes, I see. That's Knight d5 is very natural, no? Yeah. Because you have such a strong knight on d5. Is what knight d7 as well, but. Well, knight d7, I would have a feeling then, uh, then even you, you just might go bishop b2, bishop and, b2 and, then, yeah. and then you. It's restricted knight. And then uh, knight d2, knight c4, knight d6. And then you will regret. You are right. After mm -hmm. here, the problem is that we just restrict this knight with this, and then we will play to put a knight there. So maybe after bishop b7, one day we will exchange, and mm -hmm. we will put the knight there, take the fight. The knight will be very passive later, so 
okay. Uh, just in order to evaluate this position correctly, I think it will all come down to those bishops. You know, bishop of eight will be a much worse piece this than bishop. This pawn, in fact, will take a lot of space and gives the extra file on d. They have two files for white d and c. Dynamically, mm -hmm. it will be a crush. I mean, yes. Uh, so crush. you should never, if in your games yeah, so you like will you will have played. you will have the situation which uh, looks like this. Uh, almost always try to put the knight on d5 because for the moment, you know, it's a very nice At least it's not system. restricted like, yes. like, like it would be on d7. On d7 you only put it if you, will, you are sure you will take the pawn. Mm -hmm. okay, so knight d5, oh, you sh can, should you start with uh, bishop b2? You think it's natural here? Which move you want I don't know. I just wanted to have a look at the position. The problem just is knight a second. d2, you allow knight c3. Ah, knight c3 as well, of yeah, course, so it's possible. Yes. So, so you have to go there, I think. Okay, knight d5, bishop b2. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if bishop e7 or bishop b7, if there is a difference. I would say bishop e7, let's develop a bit. I am a bit stressed when my king is too much uh, but far from casting. Then just uh, from the character of the position, can we imagine how the play would continue here and why, for example, Anna didn't go for this position? Uh, I have a suggestion. Maybe we look the two last moves. We look a bit the other yes. game, then we answer mm -hmm. this philosophical question. Okay, let's Otherwise, have a look. Uh, I think we will not see the other game at so, all. Um, bishop B7. Yes. Uh, bishop, bishop F3. Three. So this is so the idea, of course. And this is the whole white. idea of go coming on E2, which arises in a lot of positions in this Queen's Gambit accepted. You come on E2, no, and in French also, uh, in the Rubinstein variation, mm -hmm. when they take on E4 and this. Very often you, you see by ourselves we play bishop e2 to change the diagonal together with knight e5 and bishop on f3. And it's directed against the bishop on b7 because then it makes a lot of squares weak like c6. So, so. it's a very important maneuver. Once again, if you have it in your game, by the way, please... Uh, uh, just remember, and sometimes you can use it. I'm so sorry, like sometimes we might encounter a few technical problems, because uh, here it's a very unusual setting. We are not in a professional studio. We are um, well doing the commentary live from the uh, Monaco Chess Club. Exactly, when and you see all those posters, yes, have all, all the posters. trophies they won. Ah, by the way, uh, have a look. There are a few score sheets, you know, from the Monte Carlo Grand Prix uh, 2015, where you yeah, like... They don't see Elmira, they, they see behind. No, 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 <laughs> but I'm telling you, just, uh, it's actually played between um, Maria Muzichuk and Hu Yifan. So yeah, yeah, there yeah. are a lot of relics, you know, a lot of artifacts, and uh, we will show it uh, maybe later, because it's, it's, it looks like a museum, Igor, no? Yeah, really, really, I am impressed. And Jean-Michel Rapper, who is the president of the Monaco Chess Club, he says that every day he will show uh, two new things. So probably today he shows this, and I don't know what it is. Ah. <laughs> he has to tell oh, us. You know? I will tell you. For me, it's a, it's a king queen, and uh, you, it closes, I think. No? no, but of course, first of all, uh, you can it's look uh, at the form, and for all the art lovers, I, I like it. It actually. reminds you of a Fabergé egg. You know, yes. it's it's a very with a, with, like a, with a king in, a queen. Or but king no, king but this king. is a different. So it's like uh, Fabergé-like pearl eggs, which were used at the yesterday's uh, opening ceremony for the drawing of lots. And, well, if, for example, if you would find the king inside, then you ah, had white. Yes, yes, yes. So this, these are exactly the same yeah. eggs that uh, we used at, uh, at the opening ceremony. Okay, let's have a look at the second game. It's yeah, very and important. Yeah, we finish yes. this one more move. Bishop d6 she played. So she took. And now she played bishop d6 to finish the, the, the development. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Okay, she still plays fast, huh? one, one hour, 28 minutes, and uh, against one hour, 20, both are playing reasonably fast. Okay, we will come back later mm -hmm. to this position. Of so course. Probably they know it. Okay. Yes, please don't forget that uh, these are classical games. We all have uh, so uh, much time to delve into the opening. Well, uh, we have oh yeah, my God. <laughs> seven hours on this, and uh, that's good. We can come back to But what is this? Is it Karukan with knight f3, knight c3 uh, or me, not? If I don't see the first moves, I would think it's, uh, it's uh, again, exchange slav, but the knight on d7 is a bit strange. I know, you're right. The, sorry, because I couldn't even see the pawn. <laughs> you no, were right. No, but it I should think. be, but w when the knight comes on d7? 
because any normal player would put the knight on c6. So it cannot be... No, but be. maybe you take on d5 only when knight bd7 is played. Let's have a yeah, look at the why opening. why should play knight bd7 uh, before e6? Igor, I can barely see the pounds. So you will have to put the, <laughs> the board and okay, I will get before. closer. I tell you what is very mm -hmm. good is that it's so far the screen that we have to make. No, no, but we will, we will manage. Yes, so d4, d5, c4, c6. Knight f3, mm -hmm. knight f6. Ah, ah, this is the bishop right g4 now. variation, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. G3, it's g4, now they take mm -hmm. the bishop. Yeah, so here, yes, of, of course, course, and here she takes d5. Yeah, but here normally it's... Uh, isn't it something with knight with c3 bishop g2 normally? But actually here I will have to rely on you uh, until I will get my computer in order to check the database because I am not familiar with this opening at all. I have never played or have seen uh, I know that in, so the f in this book of uh, Avruk, uh, who wrote, uh, you know, this masterpiece on D4, uh, his first books, I didn't read the, uh, the, the other ones, I think he was advocating this line for white in case of bishop G4. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always found it a bit difficult to play for the average player, and probably himself too, so he, he, he advised something else against Slav later, mm -hmm. later on. But I think he was recommending this, and from what I remember here, and I, I looked this position, it was, I think, knight c3, bishop g2, things like this. But okay, let's uh, okay, start let's just the at the opening from okay, a general... She, probably no. theory, uh, yeah. Igor, uh, yes, go back just from the general point of view. I wanted us to explain a little bit the opening, because first of all... Uh, in fact, yeah, I, I will explain for those ones, because I see a lot of uh, people who make this uh, elementary mistake in this position. Mm -hmm. We always say that Slav defense is, um, is played in order to, to free the bishop first, mm -hmm. outside the pawn chain, and then to play e6. The is that against knight c3, unfortunately, you can't play neither uh, bishop f5, neither bishop g4. Bishop f5 is refuted due to this, due okay. to c take d5 and queen b3. And now, due to the pressure here, the queen can't move. It, you can't play this normal move due to knight take d5, queen take b3, and knight take f6 check. Intermediate move. Intermediate mm -hmm. move, which wins the pawns. And due to this, you have to rely on some moves you are not that happy to make. You cannot play also bishop g4 due to the same reason. Now you are not pinned, so, so, so you, you can play knight e5. Mm -hmm. And after bishop e5, you do the, exactly the same line. Take, take, and queen b3, and it's even stronger for white. And you don't want to play b6, which weakens all the, the light squares and this. So for this reason, after knight c3, you have to choose between other moves than bishop f5 and bishop g4. You have this semislav, you have this slav with a6, but you understand that you, 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 you are not there to play this at first. It's not, you are not doing this happily. I mean. And you have also the normal slav with d takes c4, which takes out the b3 b, b, b square, and you use a second aspect of the slav defense, the first aspect of the pawn on c6 is, of course, to support against c take d5, because I want to take back with the pawn. But there is another hidden uh, ID with the pawn on c6. It's that, it's that when you play uh, d take c4 move, the pawn on c6 this time will support b5, which doesn't happen in Queen's Gambit setups. You know? And here you want to play b5, exactly right now. So if e4, you want to play b5. So you force more or less white to play a4 move mm -hmm. intermediate, and now they can play their beloved bishop f5 because there is no more of queen b3 and so on. So people who want to avoid this slab, which is a very big opening, I mean, it was played a lot of times, uh, even in world championship, like in matches uh, Kramnik against Anand and uh, like this. Uh, sometimes they don't want to give this pawn because of this b5 behind, and they play moves like e3. So it can happen in two versions. This version, which is very popular, and also this version. Exactly here. Okay, so um, it's leading, yeah, yeah, she played this version here with e3. Mm -hmm. So now she <coughs> is not worried at all about all those slav things because she can take back in one move. And now the pawn on c6 has nothing to do here. It should be in those structures. 
exactly like this Anna Muzichuk again, uh, Umpikuneo against Anna Muzichuk game. It should be E6 and then the pawn goes on C5, so you yes. lost the tempo. Because yeah. this is a different, uh, like, um, this is the best way opening to... conception because yeah, the... you keep the pawn on C7 because you will play C5 in yeah, one to move. To make, to, yes. to make, I mean, a counter play against this ma uh, central majority. Mm -hmm. So you have to, to, to make this break C5 to prevent E4 and so on. So, so, okay, so now they don't play here. But now the difference is that you can go out with the bishop, either here, either here, which was not possible in with the, the knight on c yes. Because why you can do it? Let's say you play bishop f5, which is the most popular move actually here. Now if you start to play the same, exactly in those positions, you can have queen b6, for instance. There is no knight take d5, the knight is home. That's as simple as that. Okay, I don't know now if there maybe is also queen better Maybe queen c7 is possible. Yeah, now queen c7 is maybe even better by theory because also the same. No knight take d5, no... Mm -hmm. Okay, I, am no, I don't know exactly what, what is the... the no, the but there are a few but moves. But there are moves uh, like this. Okay, I saw should both, be actually. considered, I saw of both. course. Um, okay, and after here, in general, they play knight c3. And after e6... So now you, you should be happy because this is the whole concept of Slav. You put the, the, the bishop outside your pawn chain. So the bishop is good. Next move you want h6, knight bd7, and you have square for everybody. And, and also and what now, I wanted to say, Igor, that when, when you have this position with bishop on f5 and uh, like knight bd7, pawn on 6 you have a very healthy position. Of course. You don't have to worry about how to develop your bishop on c8, to place on b6. So this is actually a dream position maybe after a slot. The only thing is that all the time you have to, 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 to be sure about what's going on about queen b3 when the bishop has left uh, the c8 mm -hmm. square. And Exactly here, of course, um, white has to play in this position, knight h4. He has to go after the bishop. Now there are two moves, three moves actually. There is bishop e4 or bishop g. In fact, bishop g6 is very solid, but bishop e4, they think that provoking f3, because of course you cannot take there due to d take e4, and the knight is almost trapped. You are threatening g5 here. And the pawn takes away the, the retreat square. Are you forced to play g3 here? <laughs> I think that's the only way, like, not I to lose yes. the knight immediately, so let's see. And you don't want, like, to weaken the, your white squares? Uh, yeah, so you don't do this, you don't take course. in general. So you, you play f3 in this position. And after knight g6, now you are ready to take. Mm -hmm. But, okay, black here thinks that he weakened the beat this diagonal, which <coughs> which can be important sometimes when you put the queen let's say on c7 and, uh, and when he will take you will open the line you know so the rook also will participate to attack so and some they think that it's not necessary to weaken it's more solid uh, you don't care about this because anyway white maybe will want to cast alongside so they think this detail is not important and they play bishop g6 uh, well here and also it's possible to go bishop g4 in this position, and now, from what I remember, there is there are some lines with queen b3, and if they play queen b6, or I don't know, of queen c7, there is one line where you play h3, g4, mm -hmm. the bishop will go on g6, and you, we will get back the game of uh, Anna. Uh, of, um, ah, you all transpose. Yes. So, you so could, I don't know if it's against queen b6 transpose. or queen c7, but there is one line where there is h3, g4. I think it's against queen b6. After queen b6 Maybe we can here, show it you even play after. h3, bishop mm -hmm. h5, g4, and we have the, the, the same kind of positions. And now we come back to what has been played in the game. So here the main line nowadays is this bishop e4, f3, knight g6. And from what I remember here, they, now they try to play without queen b3. Before it was queen b3 automatically. Now I think Giri started to play something like bishop d2, then knight g6, and queen c2. Yes, they're actually using, yes, I've seen quite a few games in, in this opening. They're using this kind of slow development. Yeah, yes, maybe and they, they start bishop yes. d2, they mm -hmm. stay flexible, and next move, they are not forced to take immediately. They wait that uh, white provokes a bit, and they will choose the right moment to take on g6. Because the bishop will not escape in general, he will not go on, on h5. Okay, so. And the, th the third line, which is a bit more rare here, is bishop g4. There is e6 as well, huh? the, the, one, the, the, the guys who play the semi slav, they will or play e6 Mehran. anyway. But okay, white has two more options here. They can play knight bd2, or they can play bishop d3. 
because in general, black at some point, if they, in, in such position, they will put the bishop on b7. So either with b6, bishop b7, either sometimes with d takes c4, b5, and bishop b7, cle clearing the diagonal, and later for c5. And that's why when we play moves like, let's say, knight bd2 or bishop d3, it will be better than to have a knight on c3 against d takes c4, b5. It's actually a very um, tricky move order in the opening. So now that, uh, you know, uh, well, we understand it a little bit better, and I hope that our audience as well, this last possibility that you mentioned, knight bd2, in case if you choose, if you go for semi-slav, like I Miran type I of positions. I played it, it by correspondence, I mean, against some very strong players. You play correspondence yeah, yeah. games still? I or I I still now, not, not that much anymore, but I played for 10 years a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of games. And I played knight bd2 here, I played bishop d3. Huh? I oh yes, it's, a, it's actually one of the things that I wanted to mention to our audience is that nowadays you have to consider uh, so much information. Uh, look, not only you're looking at, the, at your regular database which, have, which has how many million games. Uh, I think right now it's about it's nine about million. Nine million games. Yeah. And then you should always consider the correspondence games database That's because the events are still taking place now and uh, one of the most important novelties come from those games. Yeah, because actually now in correspondence, unfortunately, everybody uses a mm -hmm. computer. It's not like uh, in the years 1980s. It's not romantic anymore. Uh, <laughs> when my father was playing with the small board Please. and they were sending <laughs> letters. Uh, no, it's not anymore. Now everybody <laughs> has this computer and you do it online. But and what is the pleasure then? What is the pleasure? You are because testing lines, you are testing you ideas, you have, you, if you want, you take 10 days to try to think on a position, you put your computer, you analyze yourself, and then you try one thing, and uh, it's very hard to win games, actually, because, I mean, correspondence players, when they are about 2,500 already, I mean, they all play better than Carlsen, actually, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I played all those guys, I can tell you to win a game, it's not so easy. You have to, you have to play at least 90 moves and, uh, and uh, all the time, you, yeah, you do 100%, uh, almost 100% accuracy games, you know. And, uh, what is the time control? What is the actual time control 15, for, uh, for the correspondence? 50 game? days for 10 moves. From what 50 I days for 10 moves, okay. Just, uh, it's, it's a from very what I interesting piece of information. Oh, I liked it. I will play again sometimes, but uh, and sometimes, you know, you are like this, you are traveling or you are not uh, caring too much, and then you have uh, two days to do uh, 20 games. So it's, it's not so pleasant <laughs> <laughs> to do this way. Okay, so let's yes, come so back let's to this. So, so, so the, the, the trick also, so there are two ways. You, you prevent the classical slab because you are immediately there. And you have good options against the semi slav which are not knight c3 here. Here you should play knight d2, sorry, and bishop d3. So uh, that's why I think bishop f5 or bishop g4 are the best move. Bishop f5 is the most serious move nowadays. All the grandmasters are playing bishop f5. And bishop g4 is a bit more rare. That's why probably... Uh, Maria, Maria choose mm -hmm. because it's uh, less to die. And uh, the position are a bit crazy, but in general should be a bit better for white. After h3, normally they take on f3. But okay, bishop h5 has a, wo a bit worse reputation. And normally, from my knowledge, it's knight c3, e6, queen b3. And now after queen b6, uh, queen b6 mm -hmm. no, no, it's not queen b3, sorry, you have to play knight e5 here. Or knight h oh yeah, knight e5. Knight e5 seems natural. Yeah, you have to play knight e5, not to allow uh, some h5 or h6 or whatever. And after here, you will take, take, and we can have this kind of position, let's say, after queen b3, queen b6. Uh, queen Igor, b3, there may just be before you, you explain, like, like, the lines, I wanted to understand, because for me, this position is relatively you trap new. The bishop, for example, if you take on g6, then from the strategical point of view, and especially, like, the... What is the conception of, the, of this line? Are you going to play g5? Yeah, many times you play g5 and you change the pawn structure with f4, h4, but you need to control e4. You, it's very complex. So then you, play you, are, you, are, you are a bit expanding, so uh, what is the limit? I mean, mm -hmm. it's just... Uh, 
So you prepare so the this knight expansion. The knight in general after g5, it, it will not co go on h5. When later you will play g5, it will not go there because then it's restricted by those two pawns. I mean, so it will go on g8 and, and on g8 knight d7, and knight f5, yes? I, 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 I saw many games. Magnus Carlsen likes to play like this and uh, he will put the knight here and here. But white has the two bishops. If the position is um, is uh, opening, then white uh, will be clearly better. I mean, uh, under good good circumstances. Also, it's not so easy for white, for black to castle because the h pound can run very fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's solid. But on the other hand, white is doing this. Uh, well, the, 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 those things he has to do in such structure. He has to go to the guy. I remember one game of Van Veli in Slav where uh, he took the bishop, guy castle, and then Van Veli, I think, he brought all the pawns, f4, h4, e4. I mean, at one moment, there were six pawns, I think. And then g5, h5, I forgot against whom, but it was a very nice game. We will and, take and, it. and in general, in such structures, <laughs> if you want to take uh, advantage or to, to have something, you have to go to the guy. You should not just wait and play bishop e2, castle, bishop f Yes, you have to be consistent. Yes, because so black is very solid. We'll organize bishop d6, queen e7, castle, rook c8, this, and uh, some one central break some, some days. Maybe, because central break, you open the position, mm -hmm. so be careful with the bishop. But they will have a very healthy position and solid, you know. Yeah, so it's actually a very important strategical lesson uh, from a professional chess player. Igor just explained that, well, if you've chosen this strategy like h3, g4, and a, and a line which is quite aggressive, so you have to be consistent and to, to follow up, and just exactly. to, not to be hesitant. Of course, you have to know exactly with white how you go to the guy from there. Because very often they, they, they are taking really risk. I mean, g5, h4, f4, I see, and sometimes just some of them, g5, h4. Or and of course, we are always uh, telling. I am not a specialist now. I you don't have my bring computer, those so I could tell you yes. the exact lines if I have my, my data. But uh, I am not. I am not playing this line. But I just know by knowledge. And I saw many classical games there. So, so let's see what is the position on the board. So okay, right let's now. see what's happening mm -hmm. on the board. Mm -hmm. So. It was, uh, 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 we again tell that we take our time because the game is the classical time control. So now it's the opening, but it will be very slow at some point. So we of can catch, catch up. Sometimes uh, the players play very fast at the beginning because they, uh, well, they're very well aware about the opening theory in this line, especially if they've chosen it. So uh, it's also could uh, give them uh, a psychological um, advantage because mm -hmm. sometimes if you're playing very fast, then your opponent doesn't know, should I go for the line that I prepared or should I go for the line that I've played already? What is the improvement? You know, or it was a surprise already in the opening phase. So, but then at some point, the game slows down and we know that uh, some, somewhere where the creative part of the game starts. They're, Which they're is done. the most important. But yes. they have to choose openings where there can be some creative part. So, knight e5. Mm -hmm. So, knight e5. Here all is known. Knight bd7. She takes. She takes. Actually, Li Tingye is playing extremely fast. Huh? I see 1 hour 33. So, where is Maria's surprise? Because this is all theory. Uh, maybe this already... Maybe this already is something a bit more <coughs> rare. As I told you, for me, the natural moves are knight c3 from this position, e6, and probably queen b3. This should be the, the theory, what she knows. But let's, uh, let's uh, try, uh, well, I don't let's know try if and explain I, it. I don't know if it's queen b3 because there is knight g4, just I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. I, I listen. So tell no, me. no, I just wanted to, to explain it from the psychological point of view. Let's say she was not prepared for this line. Then after knight bd7, the most logical move would be c takes d5 because you are trying to exploit uh, the, the fact that the knight is already on d7, so you cannot play cd, cd, knight c6. So maybe she's not familiar with this line. So she went for the most natural move in this position. Okay, what, I, what, what, what would have been interesting to know is uh, if, for example, Maria is a very uh, adept of the Slav uh, defense. I mean, if she plays it off uh, or only opening, this I don't know. Well, I know the openings. I can tell. Let's see the position, and I will um, tell you a little bit more. First of all, about the matches, okay. about the games okay. that the players played. Because, for example, I don't know in our match 
against Zhu Van Jun if she was playing in Islam or this. So such data could be interesting here. So know, they play it from time to time, but for example, one of the main opening weapons uh, of Mizichuk's sisters uh, lately was Grunfeld. Okay, so this might be already a surprise for in both matches. Uh, yeah, because the, as you can see, in both matches, they play D4 first move. They don't try to avoid any Grunfeld. Mm -hmm. So they were targeting, and as we know, uh, we have Maxim Vashiela graph experiences and uh, a lot of players target his opening preparation as I remember and like they play knight f3 the or c4 first there are so right. many lines where you can trap uh, your opponent in the opening already so you have to be very careful and how many lines you have to check in the morning how many hours does it take Igor you who know this preparation very deeply you've helped Timur Ajabov even during the recent candidates like how many lines, how many hours you have to prepare in the morning? I'm not talking even in the Well, evenings. for the player in general, it should be really uh, not much. He has to be extremely fresh at the game. It's the most important. I mean, probably everybody at the top level will agree. You have to make as little work as possible for the player. I would say one hour. 30 maximum for the player. That's the max. But for example, if for you're the player, playing, yeah, for the player, for the coach, it's the story. For the coach, it's 12 hours. If you're playing the Nidorf and the Grunfeld. This is a problem. Okay, so. <laughs> this is a problem because if you have only Nidorf, uh, uh, Grunfeld, and only lines like this where it's crazy, uh, then you, you exhaust yourself a bit. And uh, probably for Maxim Vashilagrav, it can be a real problem because he has a lot of that rely on memory and. Uh, and this, this is uh, tiring sometimes because blinds are all tacticals. On the other hand, he knows that tactically is very strong. So, I mean, on equal terms, if the position is normal, may, he may outplay his opponent. So, you mean if he survives the opening, like I translate? Yes. So. The, problem, the problem is that, as you say, you, 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 you employ this word surviving because the problem is that he will face the moves of a very strong computer, of a very strong team. I mean, with a concept behind, not only one move. Uh, and this is difficult because you have also to understand if you will be able to, to, to cope with the, with the strengths of the novelty. And, uh, and with the pressure also. I, I remember that, I, I mean, uh, I know that Raja, for example, is extremely confident about coping, even when he was playing more, much more sharp. He was, he was telling me like, uh, okay, Igor, bring the, the line and me, I will cope with the, don't worry, if I have to find, I mean, computer strength move, I will find, this is my job, your job is to bring the line, the best line, <laughs> I will cope <laughs> with the rest. Okay, Igor, so. then without like maybe taking a lot of details, I wanted to ask, well, to get into like a lot of details which might not reveal like some information, but I wanted to ask you, what was the most difficult situation that you have, that you had to face as a second? Of course, it's when he starts a series of losses. And then how do you deal with this? For you deal humanly, I mean, I mean, you understand that it's possible, you try to, it's just about psychology then, you have to put him in, a, wh what I say is that when you, when you, you are, you, you are, you are, you are preparing the game, the most important is that he's fresh. When you are uh, at the tournament and things are not going your way, the most important is that, uh, is about psychology and to avoid, I mean, a complete disaster. This is the most, and to put him in good mood, it's very difficult because some players are very emotive with the losses and uh, they, they, some players, I mean, there are players, like, let's say, like Morozevic, like Shirov before, they, they, they were in, the only way for them, the real, the real only way to cope with the loss is uh, an, to another win. another win. game. Yeah, but you understand that you can lose two in a row and three in a row and four in a row. This is, uh, some, sometimes you see Morozevic when he was in bad form at, at his top, I mean. Yes. He was scoring minus five, minus six, or, and because he, he was always trying to get this famous uh, win, uh, which was never appearing, in fact. I, I think that it is very important that uh, we uh, we're, we tackle this subject, very important subject of dealing with your emotions, especially after a loss, because uh, chess his, has this very particular like, specificity that even after a loss you have to continue. 
like while compared to like any other professional sport, you well, know, in coping a, with the loss, it depends in some tournaments you, take, you can yes. take buys. And <laughs> no, no, but still, <laughs> yeah, but in France you have to continue at least. Well, I mean, especially at such high level and with well so much at stake, you have to uh, grieve. You know, you have to prepare once again. Uh, you and you have to fight back like on the next day. And I think it's very important that uh, we well we talk about this. So sometimes it also might help younger players, you, maybe to deal with their tournaments and their emotions much better. Because some, for me, well, especially for my generations, it seemed like uh, you you just had to survive no matter what. And I think it's important also. To but it's to tiring because with the years, I mean, I remember Raja, Grichuk and this, with the years, I mean, when they were younger, both of them, they were coping with those things very, very good. And with the years, it's like, uh, it's like um, status. Uh, it's like... Uh, um, well, it affects like the your... It affects more and more and more, and you can cope much more, uh, much less with those things. I mean, with the time. For example, Grishuk's time, Grishuk's time trouble, saying. he could handle them brilliantly when he was younger. Now, with the years, it's not the same story. I mean, if you are in time trouble now at his age, you will not, you will get disaster results probably. And yes, the, with the age, there, there is also this factor coming. Of course. Uh, with Raja, the same. Now, if you noticed, he's not anymore in time trouble. Before, he was a bit like, uh, like Grichuk, last candidate, he was not at all in time trouble. He understood. He's, <laughs> no, he's not so young, and uh, what? He, he, if he continues to be in time trouble, it will be a disaster, minus five, minus six, and... Uh but I think that was a very wise decision, uh, like you have to analyze the situation once again and to take all the like parameters into account and uh, sometimes even to modify your opening preparation and even the style of play. Yeah, sometimes you should stop playing those. I don't know what will happen with for Ma Maxime Vachilagrav because he has a very tiring repertoire, I mean. Uh, he gets targeted all the time. He, I mean, when he's black, when he's white, he can play a lot of things. He's very strong with white. With black, he's also very strong, but it's very tiring. I don't know if he can do it still five years, six years. It's extremely tiring. I mean, to play all, only the most sharp in chess. <coughs> and, uh, and sometimes, for example, Teimu was as sharp as him before, and now he changed and he's becoming, he became very, very solid. So. Yes, that's very important. But let's have a look because, yeah, because uh, she takes <laughs> d5. No, but uh, well, the games are quite slow. But please have a look at the time difference. That's the only numbers that I yeah, see yeah, on the yeah, board, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, the clock is ticking. And probably Li Tingye is, a, he, I think she's the youngest huh, participant from what I saw physically yesterday. I, d I didn't know her. No, no, and she she's is younger. The youngest, of she's course. Young. And so when she's younger, probably she works a lot. It's just suppositions. Huh? Probably she works a lot, probably she has good coaches around, and probably theoretically she is, uh, she is uh, how to say... Uh, she's more fit. No, not physically, uh, theoretically, I mean, she is, uh, she is probably at the, at the top of the, 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 the theory, uh, of at, the, at the actual theory, and she knows even those small, uh, those small lines, and she has some ideas there or there. To be honest, I, I think that uh, all those players are, are such professionals that they, of course, had training session and before and normally they start preparing six months in advance, so that it's not only about the professional preparation. I have like maybe some, preparation. Uh, some, some qu about this, I am <coughs> a bit more sceptical maybe about Humpi, because Humpi was extremely active, she was extremely active, like, 10, 15 years ago. She was over 2,600 and this. And then I think she stopped a couple of years. She, she, she stopped a couple of years, I mean, uh, to play as actively. Probably she had family life, yes. She married, I saw, on chess base. And I don't know if she has a kid, maybe, or she has probably. So those things affect a chess player. Myself, I have one kid and... Uh, she has a daughter. Yes. She has a daughter, Umpi. Uh, and I don't know <coughs> if... Uh, 
this, uh, how, how much this affects her theory, uh, her uh, work, chess work, and uh, if she is back at the same level than before stopping a bit, you know? And it, well, it might not affect the, um, your professionalism, but it certainly might change the prism. Uh, well, you're not looking at things uh, you are the not same as way. Sharp, yes, also. No, but it's also it's like sometimes you consider that, um, uh, well, having a child is well, it's life changing, and sometimes, well, most of most of the times, your priorities change, and also it's the way you you are not going to put everything at stake and sacrifice your life in order to become the world champion. While, for example, for Li Tingji, this is still the uh, her uh, mindset. You see, so. Uh, yeah, the mindset change, uh, they, you are right. I mean, uh, yeah, there are a lot of players that uh, after getting a child, uh, change a bit their priority. I mean, for example... Uh, even Serena example, Williams, you know, she to yes, talked a lot about it, yeah. yes, of course. But even, for example, um, uh, the wife of Mathieu Cornet, uh, Demonte, mm -hmm. she, she, she had a very good period, like 2470 she reached, and then she had the child, and uh, she didn't play much, and now she... She lost a couple of ratings. Even she's still very strong. It's not so easy to go back to, to where you stopped just before the child. Of and course. Uh, and this was actually why I wanted uh, just to say a few words about uh, well, Serena Williams. So well, we're talking about tennis, but of But how you, you, you was your, yourself in this case. Yes, I, I was mean, myself so. in this case. But I think that uh, sometimes it's also like when it's coming uh, from such an important figure, like a sports athlete, uh, which explains how difficult it was, especially for her to get to the top level and to get back to the training and to endure the same number of hours and uh, this was not easy at all of course but because you we don't see your child going and it's not easy yeah? and we have of course the pandemics which affected the the life of the chess players uh, i wanted to explain that Lei tingy didn't play a lot of tournaments but those which she played she showed fantastic results and especially, especially these, uh, the uh, way she qualified for the candidates. The yes, we will talk about this a little bit uh, more in detail. We will explain how the players qualified for the uh, candidate tournaments. So one of the qualification sports was uh, awarded in the Grand Suisse. It's uh, probably the strongest women's open ever Organized. It's an open tournament where, uh, I don't know for women, but for men it's like 140 mm -hmm. masters invited. And uh, everybody by invitation, but a huge number, 140. And there are only two spots for the, world, for, for, for the, the candidates. The I don't know how many players for the women's section. Well, it was one also spot, maybe. It was one but spot. how many invited at the start? I, I would say uh, I, I would say 64, but I'm not sure the number. It's just the but uh, you one see, of it's my a, something already big. Everybody extremely strong, and she won it with one point ahead. Like one round to spare. Well, one yes. round to spare. So, I mean, she's phenomenal, phenomenally strong. But it's not the first time I see a Chinese player extremely strong. I mean, not the, the most famous one. For example, there were, were some, so, some world champions like Xu Yuhua, or uh, there was also um, Tan Zonghi, I think. Yes, of she course. was also, mm -hmm. but she's in the other group. And such players that are much less famous than Hui Fan or than uh, yeah. Zhu Jun or than Xu Jun. Xi Jun. from the past. And, uh, but still, I mean, they are like no name when we see them from the West the first time. But in fact, they are already extremely strong. And for me, she's a bit like this. Maybe she will become like a big name before, but uh, 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 later, but at the moment, for me, she's young generation. I don't know her yet, but when you see that she wins the, the Grand Suisse so easily and so strongly, I mean, you can only be impressed. It shows a great potential, of course. Of course. So let's have a look at the position on the board. After c takes d5, knight c3, e6, which is a very natural move, of course, bishop d2. And uh, that's what I wanted to ask you, because I asked you if I could play g5. Was it a positional Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a normal move, mm -hmm. g5. Also, g5 will give this knight a potential strong square on f8, g6 is the destination. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can go on b8, c6 as well, so I don't know. It depends on what white is going to play, but in... Okay, g5, it prevents white H4. from playing g5 also. H4. Uh, G5, it prevents this g5, h4 from white, you know, and... Uh, 
So bishop d3, yes. So she started mm -hmm. to play g5. Uh, do, do we have the time when she played g5? No, huh? we just have the actual time. Right? Let's have a look at the position. So bishop, bishop d3, d3, rook c8. And as we can see, a late in g is thinking. But so you know, even here, I, w I will... Uh, I will uh, say one word. It's also here you are. You, you have those options at first to go bishop g2, and finally you choose d3 because the positions a bit evo um, evaluated uh, in one way. So now bishop is better on d3. Maybe two moves ago it was better on g2. But that's what I wanted to say. Now she has chosen uh, to bishop there. d3 because uh, another question that I wanted you uh, to answer is like, where are you going to castle with black? Or are you going to castle? I think you will wait, you will make the strategy of waiting white to show his cards first. From what I see. But can I go then, uh, can I go for a plan with a long castle? Because the position is quite defined in the center, so it allows me to play maybe queen a two and long castle. Yeah, but can I do and the same? And all your pieces are okay, here. Okay, first thing is where I will put my pieces. Should I play a6, bishop d6, then queen, let's say, e7? No, because when I will long castle, then bishop take a6 in the, in the air. I, mean. Actually, I, I speak about, let's say, this. Let's say mm -hmm. you play a6. You play queen e2, yes. I go mm -hmm. there, let's say you go long castle. Ah, now I don't like because I understand, because you can go b5 very quickly and knight b6. Yeah, is because it possible, my point is, is that if you long castle as well, you have to be careful about, I think, bishop, bishop take a6 here. Mm -hmm. And uh, pieces are, 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 are coming fast, I mean, with knight b5, bishop a5, rook c1, I mean... Oh, no, this looks like it's completely lost, of course, I knight mean, b5, knight b5 rook c1... I mean, unless you can put some, this, if you have to put knight f8... No, 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 this is devastating, of course, I agree with you. But I was looking more at b5 and knight b6, this uh, but you are right. rather Ma unpleasant. And many times in the other lines, when uh, against this bishop f5, knight h4, bishop e4, it's a bit similar kind of positions mm -hmm. because I will also take the bishop on g6, so it will be the same structures. And many times when they see that white is castling, they let the king there and they play b5. And when they are sure that sacrifices are not so good, uh, and then they play sometimes ki castle later and king b7. And Rauf Mamedov played a lot of games like this. It's actually, it's, um, it's a very interesting position. Um, I wanted to explain it a little bit because like, like you said, the cards are not, have not been revealed yet, and there are so many options which are still left after the opening. So you can keep your king in the center, you can castle short, you can castle long. Uh, well and you have to be careful about one thing, is that white has the bishop pair, but the, at the moment the bishop pair is not effective. But you have this potential that if the position opens, the bishop pair may become a big asset. And also, you, you have to see how it opens, because sometimes if I play e5, then knight take, you have the queen on e2 and pawn on a6, and you have to give on d3. Okay, but I mean, it can, in general, black has to be careful because this e5 that he may play easily, it may backfire, I mean. But especially you can also after play g5 e4 when yourself you, when you and have. in uh, many positions and open Yeah, but e4 is also tricky because then you get an isolated pawn. Of course, so, uh, you, you should so. be careful, yes. but uh, yes. sometimes it, it, it might work. Okay, so let's see. She played rook c8, so she answered your question and <laughs> the king will not go there. <laughs> <laughs> we had just to look a bit further. But here probably she was already thinking a lot. Because when we saw this position at first, it was like one hour, one hour 33 against 55 minutes. Or, so probably here already she doesn't know this position so much. Mm -hmm. So I think g5 and let's say uh, rook c8 are moves she made over the ball, I think. Okay, so rook c8 and uh, yeah, king f1. I just wanted to tell you that there was another option to castle artificially and king f1 uh, was played on the board. Yeah, king f1 was So she wants on the simply board. to play king f1, king g2. I mean, let's see, yeah, because maybe, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because what was the other option? The, uh, the other option was to put the king on b1, but I think what she would play after this move. She would go a6 maybe, no? No, maybe bishop, bishop b7, no? You don't want to play bishop b7. Bishop d6, you mean? No, e7. e7. Yes, yes. 
Oui, c'est Just to develop. Well, I'm a, solid, because no, I'm afraid of e4 always. If I put the e4, bishop on d6, take. yes. But then you have the g5 hanging and, b7. and b7 hanging. You are, you, I probably lose in the pawn. No, so no, that's if, if e4 will not. Ah. You mean I will have to go back? Uh, no, but let's show. Let's just show. Just the okay. Let's how, say I go here. How no, but I like a6 because I am more concerned. I will. I will tell you <laughs> with uh, with uh, with long castle than with. Uh, oh, okay. So, so, but I don't know if I do something against long castle because now I go b5. b5? You go king b1. Why can I play like something like knight b6? And now knight b6. Something before. like this. Mm -hmm. Which should be acceptable if it's working. Yeah. This is the way Black probably wants to play in case of uh, in case of Lancaster, I think. No, this I think it's. Uh, but uh, let's say your nice bishop d6. You wanted to ask now if e4, right? Yes. Okay, if e4. Now I have to take. Mm -hmm. And knight e4. Yeah, but what I wanted to say is that you attack g5 after this, but only once. Okay, now after knight e4, but. Queen uh, e4 or whatever. No, I wanted to take with the bishop. And okay. to keep my queen b5. But uh, here, I guess, can I play knight f6 and give the pawn? Ah, and then you play rook b8. No, rook b8, bishop c6 check, but... Ah, you see, but maybe... Rook c2 or something. But maybe this, you will have sufficient compensation because I think that, um, well, there are too many, like, positional weaknesses. Like, How the pawns are yeah. fixed, like f4 squared, maybe this, d4, no? so rook b8, mm -hmm. and after check king somewhere, king b7 or something. No, 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 no. Yeah, I don't but want now I am facing queen b6. I am very active actually. But if I simply play bishop c3, yeah, but bishop is passive. Yes, bishop is passive. Okay, then maybe. Uh, but still, have, but yeah, still. But you also have a problem with the king here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, okay, here I'm like I have two bishops, a pair of bishops, and I'm a pawn up. So I have to be careful. I'm not sure I it's admit, so clear, but yeah. no. But at D6, least I, I still kept my pawn. Like so uh, queen d6 here. Well, I have to go back. Let's say bishop g2. Because you don't have this uh, knight d5, uh, which is... Open. Yeah, maybe. No, maybe mm -hmm. here. Yeah, I don't know if it's possible to give this pawn. I don't know. Okay, let's say it just... I just wanted for to show me, that... Uh, for me, yes. it would be more natural to play bishop d6 if I can do it. I mean, if e4 doesn't, um, work. Mm -hmm. doesn't work that good. And of course, more important is a6 b5, I feel. Mm -hmm. If also e4 is not devastating, I mean. Because of course, you have to look all the time, uh, pound break, and you to see if you have time to do such a6 b5. I mean, mm -hmm. With the bishop on f8, especially. And you, you like to play more conservative. Yeah, no, it, it's not seven. about playing more conservative. It's just that I was worried uh, because you should consider like every situation, every position as a unique because you should always be able to reevaluate because, well, you might have all these moves in advance, but something went wrong and you have to adapt. And this is one of the biggest qualities, I think, of the professional chess players because they know so many plans. So here I was actually concerned about bishop uh, d6, e4. Let's see what computer I have to, sorry. <laughs> if computer says bishop e7 and a6, yeah. What does the computer say, tell me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just you have to have <laughs> like uh, like we will arm. see. Like uh, a Jumel. <laughs> Should be seven. He says, b he says, computer says knight b6 here. Ah, so there was even a third option, okay. Third option, a knight c4. But he, okay, he says in general a6 and bishop e7 here are more or less the same. Not at all my bishop d6, probably there are some tactical problems. Maybe knight b5 is the problem as well, mm -hmm. I don't know. I was, raised, before, I was raised on the street, so you see, I can feel bishop b7, you know, no, no, the no, danger. No, 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 but the <laughs> danger is not your e4. The danger is probably knight b5, bishop b8, and bishop b4, I think. Ah, From this is a very side, nice idea, of course. I think that but then you have to give up the bishop. No, no, yeah, you cannot play bishop, bishop b8. Bishop, of there course. is this problem of bishop b4, I think, yeah. How bishop my American before. American colleagues they would say, oh man. <laughs> I don't know if bishop before computer says knight c3. What is knight c3 back? No, this okay. I don't understand this. Ah, maybe after bishop before you, you might lose a piece after queen b6, and then you will have to go back bishop d2. What do you, or bishop a3? Bishop a3. <laughs> I can choose. But yes, but then. Uh, no, it should be problem tactically. Yes, but know. tactically I was thinking. Uh, tactically a6 first. 
And after 96 check, it should not work due to tactical reasons. Take, take. Now at queen b6. Hmm. I would even try knight e4. Knight this e4 is a typical good, maneuver, yeah, 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 yeah. yes, of should course. Be then. Mm -hmm. Bishop will not do. So, Igor, before we go in a, on a small break, let's mm -hmm. just have a look at the final position yeah, okay. after the opening okay, here. So, rook c8 was played. Okay, so all those last two moves are over the board. Mm -hmm. Now, king f1, this artificial castling. White also commits because black commits first with rook c8. Now, she has the information and she chose to go there. Because, as we say, if we start to go queen e2, long castle, this a6, b5 taking all the space, knight b6 may be very unpleasant. Mm -hmm. So now, also, it's not easy for black to make a single break on the king side, you know. So, okay, and this move the last is fine. move, which is the. Oh, so she played she your is. move. Now it is possible, of course. Because <laughs> <laughs> no queen on e2. And uh, probably knight b5 is, is nothing, so. Okay, so um, the opening stage is like over. It doesn't like my move, I think. He prefers knight b6 in yeah, computer. Uh, he says, says knight b6, knight c4 was the better try. But you, as a human, you don't like when this, you don't, didn't play e6, you have bishop b5 or queen a4. When you have this diagonal available, you are reluctant to, be, mm -hmm. to do this. Of course. But then uh, we should understand why this is uh, the first line of the computer. Maybe because he wants to bring... Because he sees that after b3... The other knight, knight on g7, I don't know. This. And then knight g7, knight f8, knight g6, and then you bring your knight back. Yeah, but it's very slow. I know, I understand, it's of course. It's very slow. It's a matter of, of rhythm, I think. No, and B3, uh, then the problem is that you are closing the line there, you are weakening there, so you don't want to do it. Hmm. King G2 probably would be the move here. Knight C4, you don't care a bit to give this. Which would be the move. Queen A4 check, huh? I guess, yeah. Why Queen A4 check? Like I don't know, Queen G7. There. Yeah, you have the bishop there. Actually. Ah, you simply, you want to take the, to grab the pawn on a7? Yeah, I can or not. Knight take d2, bishop b5? No, but if you take queen a7, let's see, and I, you have no squares. I was thinking more like of making a move. I'm not taking on d2. Let's say queen a7, can I like trap your queen in some no, 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 da dangerous I, manner? No, because I will... Uh, how are you going to escape? What, to shoot d6, for instance? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can always take on c4 if I need. But then how? Like bishop c4, rook c4, and, and then, then play the position, no? Queen yes. b6. Ah, queen b6, queen b3, of course. Before, maybe. Mm -hmm. hey, yes. Okay, let's see. Like, just uh, I want to continue a little bit. We will never go in the break. Okay, in general <laughs> check. Okay, rook c8. And now queen a4, no? Mm -hmm. Queen a4. And if you take yes, and you can C2, exchange. Queens, but moment, of course. you maybe can you take and rook c2 or do I have rook c1? But the pawn on b2 is protected first of all because if you I can mean, take yes. first. Mm -hmm. How is this? Rook c2. Can I play just rook c1? No, because I see knight e4 coming. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm a bit worried. I mean, in general, I see rook c1. But I'm a bit worried. Rook c1, rook take d2. Yes, rook c8. So if I sacrifice the rook, then you play uh, 94, you 94 and rook f1. how can you evaluate this position? Bishop g3? Yeah, that's the... Okay, let's show it. Just, uh, I, I'm not sure because it's not at Because in general, if white could play this with the tactical trick to take, to check and take, it, sh it should be fine. But you okay. should not forget that there is this pawn, the rook is very active mm -hmm. and the knight is also passive a bit. So check. Just king e7 or d7, I don't know. You take there. <coughs> no, 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 king e7, because knight b6 might yeah, be a threat, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, king e7, sorry. For so me, it was a detail, it was just the position after. Yes, of course, knight. you don't give knight b6, we check. Knight e4. Now knight e4, rook f1, bishop g3, mm -hmm. yeah, careful, huh? Ah, maybe you can even play knight g3, knight yeah, e4, is, yes. it, is it possible? Yes. And uh, bishop g3, is it possible as well? Give this. This may be tricky because wherever I move, next move I come back. Mm -hmm. And when you start to lose this, then the bishop becomes very strong. And uh, also the king has a safe escaping square on f6. So this is tricky. This is not worth for, uh, for white, for sure. 
Yeah, so probably we can't go, go this way. I mean. But okay, this was. Uh, okay, okay, maybe. But you are right. Maybe sometimes ideas. you can play dynamically, mm -hmm. and then uh, for the pawn, it's not the queen is a bit trapped, and if I want to escape, I have to give squares like rook c2 after. Or to give well your. I have to give bishop my bishop yes. pair, and then I have to let you enter, so it gives dynamism to black. So mm -hmm. maybe. And let's switch like. But so computer to the says knight b6 mm -hmm. here. Maybe I don't know. So king f1, she went bishop d6, let's see. Mm -hmm. And king g2, so that's the position on the board. King g2, and now she had artificial castling. Maybe black can cast. Well, with the rook on h1 still, maybe she can't. Can she cast over here, or h4 is coming? h4, huh, I think. Yeah, so yes, she, she has this problem. Huh? Mm -hmm. The point is that you cannot profit from the, the discovering because uh, because always I have queen h1 coming I mean, and mate there. Yeah, no, this is With a devastating attack. Let's switch to the second game. Okay, Igor, so they, are, they, they stop at this point. So yes. they stop at this point. So they stop king g2, and this is my move. Bad. So mm -hmm. let's switch the game. Just we will have a look at what's happening on the board. Okay, so now they are there, let's say. A few moves have been played, so we stop there. Mm -hmm. Now she takes, takes, bishop d6, we stop there. So now what did she do? Is the game between Umpi Kunero and Maria uh, Anna Muzi. Well, bishop d6 is forcing a decision. You, you have probably to take... Um, yeah, the problem is that knight c6 is uh, brassing air, I mean. It's just uh, doing nothing. You just go there and uh, the knight is in danger. I mean, th there is no discovery. Mm -hmm. There is no discovery. That's what is important. And if there was a discovery, maybe you would go on c8, but here no need. Rook c8 is coming. The knight is almost trapped. I mean, this is very bad for me. So here you have to do something else. Either you, you play bishop b2, Then queen c7 is not possible, but uh, you... Uh, do what do you do after bishop b2? Ah, but maybe now you can take on d4, because you are forced to ah, take yes. with the pawn, yes? yes so then, then w that's why she didn't want to take on... Uh, okay, but then you have also to cope with the c6 square now, because you opened. I mean, now it can be a bit not the same. It can be a knight c6 somewhere uh, and rook c1. Yes, but on the other hand, your bishop on b2 is terrible, no, I, and I have knight d5 as well, so yeah, it's not that... Mm -hmm. And if I go... Knight c6 now is a bit maybe. Knight c6. Uh, the problem with knight d2 is can you take twice on e5? No, I think not because bishop f6 at the end. Oh, you mean uh, take take queen d2? Yeah, I wanted mm -hmm. this. Just show yes. Mm -hmm. And this to get there, but the problem is that at the end f6 is hanging. So, so bishop you take, five take, and, and bishop f6. And this is good for. Uh, this is good for uh, white. Because the castle is shattered. So let's say here, what do you have to play? Then you have to play something like BC, BC, B5. Mm -hmm. B5 takes D square, and also after knight C6, it gives D square, which will allow rook C8. And then black is better. Probably B5 here. Yeah. And after something like rook c1. So you have such a nice outpost on d5. Why don't yeah, but you, you have to cope with the immediate activity. Mm -hmm. Then you can play even knight b6, knight d5. Maybe you leave your knight on f6. And you then have you to, 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 to understand if you can leave this knight on c6 and it will make no damage at all. And then you, you, you do this. Well, maybe knight b6, yes. And this should not be important, as you said. Queen somewhere, queen d7. Yeah, you are better here. Okay, so it was important to understand this, so we just look knight take d7, knight take d7. And she took back with the knight because the rook was hanging. Unfortunately, she can play queen take u2, queen take a check. Those are the moves that we miss sometimes, you know, it's a long move, what we uh, call the Queen A. <laughs>
Mais personne n'allait aller dans le blue screen. Well, really. You are an old fox, you know, so <laughs> we cannot trick you. So let's. Uh, I'm at least not with screen tech. <laughs> so you have to. It has to be a bit more sophisticated. Uh, what move was. No, I understand what you mean. <laughs> For some amateurs, sometimes they are missing very long moves. She's mm -hmm. right about this. And uh, sometimes, oh, sh oh, sorry for the word, my, my piece is hanging. And well, it shouldn't be that trivial like Queen 8 losing a rook, but sometimes you forget that the bishop is uh, on uh, b1 or in h7 or it controls the square b1 and you put the piece like you lose an exchange, you play rook b1, and then this is the long move and the bishop on h7 simply takes uh, an exchange. So, What uh, I like is that we are more and more red on the, on the, <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> Soon I will become, I will change color. Oh, you, you still have a possibility to I don't know if it's because yourself. it's hot in the room or with the lights or because, I don't know. Soon I will be totally red <laughs> or it pink. It reminds me of a song, you know, I'm too hot, call the police and the firemen. <laughs> you don't know, like, <laughs> I'm too hot. <laughs> it will make a dragon retirement. <laughs> okay, maybe. okay, I will... I will um, I'll show you the song later. <laughs> okay, what, what was the next move? Uh, right, let's do so. Bishop a3, so she's spinning the guy, so no c take d4. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, it's a nice move, so you're almost forced to protect your bishop if you want to take on d4. Uh, what did she play, Anna? You mean... No, uh, one thing that we had to mention here, maybe, is that if you take there to go there, maybe there is problems on the diagonal here. You are not forced to take back. Maybe you can play bishop e5 here. No, but here, of course, <laughs> you just win uh, Sometimes you have piece, c6, yes. I mean, you have to think. But <laughs> no, 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 but here you win a piece like after... Yeah, so the problem, and what about bishop b2, which was the other candidate moves? I mean, for me, it was bishop b2, the move here. Yeah. Uh, can you consider taking here? on a d4? I think. <coughs> yes, taking on d4. Now the idea, of course, is to take back with the piece. We don't want this isolation here. Mm -hmm. But then, if I simply castle, you castle, you then you will exchange. This? Yeah, castle. Yes. And I, I want to exchange the dark, dark square bishops. This is uh, the very important positional idea here. So if I can play bishop, so bishop e5, five, yes. Yeah. Very often you do it uh, when your and bishop you is on the seven. You have to take mm -hmm. because otherwise, and the c6 square that is a bit weakened is nothing here. Yeah. And you also have counterplay on d3. I mean, in case you take, no, this black is, is perfect. Completely equal. Cool. Yeah, so she cannot basically she cannot play just bishop b2 because black will just take there and play bishop e5. And you see one thing, Almira. It's what we said at first. It's very important for black in all those structures with. Uh, with um, uh, queen's accepted, gambit accepted. Uh, queen's gambit accepted to have this c5 break because at some point it allows to play c take d4 and get back the the one versus one. Of course, and to simplify the position. And yeah, if you don't do this break, then you have big problems. So she played bishop a3. She doesn't pin. allow yes, c takes d4. And now the point is that you don't have queen e7, which would be a very nice move in order to play this because still you are hanging there. So what she did, either she, normally you should castle, but also you have to be careful sometimes on the D-line. I mean, sometimes rook D1 and D takes C5 is coming fast, you know, with those pieces there. That's why in general I like to play queen E7 just to go out a bit from this. You know, there is um, a very interesting idea, but of course you can see it in many openings. Uh, the uh, lateral moves from your rooks. I was thinking that even if you play uh, rook d1, sometimes I will have the option to play rook a7. Now that I change the light square bishop, you you'll mean after d takes c5, yes, bishop so takes. Yeah, yeah, but the problem is that then you get a bad pawn. I mean, I go d takes c5. When you play bishop takes c5, I play bishop take bishop. I use the the, the the pin, so you cannot play knight take. Maybe we can just illustrate. Uh, we, we were this. we were illustrating this. Let's say castle. Moment, I lost. Mm. We lost the, I lost the, <laughs> the mouse. And one day it will be the, I feel it will be the battery one day. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Ah, there, I see, I see. Okay, sorry. Yes. So, yes. castle? I always hope it's the battery of the mouse. <laughs> to look like an idiot. That's <laughs> not just. <laughs> so, yes, I was right. Okay, so, so uh, we were thinking about castle, let's mm -hmm. say. 
now the let's say on D1. Mm -hmm. Then the point is that if you play your rook a7, uh, Amira ID is to, to protect this. But the point is not about protecting, the point is about pinning. So now I take, and when you take there, let's say, or with the knight, I take again, and unfortunately you have the queen on the way, so you cannot play the normal move. This and you have to spoil your structure, and then it's very bad. So that's one of the problems. One of the problems is about material, one of the problems is about the pin. So we are threatening to take on c5 here. Yes, but maybe here you can simply play queen e7. Yeah, now you have to play queen e7, I think. Yeah. Ah, but then maybe you can exploit it by taking c5, going queen c6. Okay, but this is too deep. Let's just have a what look. What do you uh, mean after this? Yes, and so I will take, and if you take knight c5, I might play uh, maybe queen c6. And if I just uh, protect? You can simply protect, yes, so this is not... Or I can counter-attack there, I don't know. And then queen b7, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And your knight is still on... B I mean, uh, should not be the knight is still on b1. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Queen no, no, c6, no. I don't know, probably here you have to to bring the piece. Knight c3? Knight d2, maybe a knight c4 or knight, knight c3. But after knight d2, I can always play b5, yes, this is Black fine. Looks fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course. No, probably in such positions you have to come back there, I think. More this. This is the way to play, I think. Because then the bishop is a bit better for white than this one. But okay, black, you know how it is. I mean, you will wait to see where the knight goes. If it goes there, maybe you will play if I... Maybe like one last point why you... Um, why you evaluate this position is a bit better uh, for between white. Between a bit better for white and equal, I think. But uh, you can press a bit for Just because like your bishop on b2 is incredibly better. active while you have better still pieces, have, yes, yeah. you still have this pawn on e3. And you made more mis more uh, weakening here mm -hmm. than me, only two. And the bishop has no, I mean, he's struggling a bit to find a good square. Okay. I feel. Of course. So. But you have to play on such small details. And okay, so how did, do, did they do? Uh, this I don't like. I'm not a fan of this. Okay, she wins the tempo to attack. Okay, you protect the bishop, you attack the h2, and you want to play c6, d4. Okay, okay, ah, no, okay, no, no, no. You uh, cannot play because you still have bishop d6, and, and you used to, yeah. you see, so this is not possible. Okay, right. So she um, combines several ideas, but at the same time, well, she simply prepares castling. So castle, how do we protect? Do we play g3 or h3 here? Do we need to protect it? Ah, you mean you sometimes we can sacrifice yes. because then she has to. The problem is that when she takes on h2, then she has to come back. So it's tempo. You mean something like rook d1 maybe? But maybe it's not enough. Okay, let's try rook d1, bishop h2. There is always this possibility. Mm -hmm. Almira is right because uh, in the Sicilian, ma many yes. times it's this idea. You, sometimes you don't protect at all and you let them take because it's time consuming to take. I feel that it's dangerous. You have, you have the, the contact here mm -hmm. and uh, in general he has to lose the tempo to, to, to go back somewhere here or here. Or, but here it's maybe very dangerous, I think. So now I take and I play your move bishop b2. And there I is like your queen c6 much. check in the air. So mm -hmm. be careful here. I mean, I feel queen c6 is coming, you know. So you have to play here. I have to take now. What do I do? I take or bishop b2. No, I like bishop b2. Uh, I like very much And this the point is that you cannot cast all because Rook d7. Rook d7. The, the, the knight needs protection. So now I can play rook e7 and protect this knight, but you see your pieces are very awkward. You have the, now the bishop on c5, knight d7. You give me this, so. But I don't know how to protect everything here. Maybe you have to do this. And then the position I can play. Uh, yeah, I can just go back. No, no, but uh, this is Should a disaster. Should be too back. Maybe. Yeah, probably. If like the it. knight, man, the knight will come maybe on. I don't know, only four normally, but sometimes it can come on defense if needs. Yeah, we have to be careful about such things. So probably she should not take there. Uh, she should not take. I mean, 
After here, you have to ignore it. I mean, Castor. Maybe Castor is. Mm -hmm. Probably Castor. Ah, but then D takes C5. How do you take? You uh, take with the knight. With yes, the knight. And in this position. And don't forget that this is still a threat because sometimes I will check, mm -hmm. and now that you took on C5, I have Bishop E5 back. Mm -hmm. You see, you cannot ignore it, let's say, play here to come here, because now I check, and the difference is that there is not this pawn standing on d4, so I can just come back with the tempo here, which is perfect. I want a pawn on this. But, you know, somehow, even here, I have the feeling, even if I lost the pawn on h2, let's say, a sacrifice, like, my pieces are so much active still. Like, if I play rook c1 no. here, what uh, do you think? No, I mean, this is enough compensation not to lose, no, <laughs> for sure. Rook c8 here immediately, so I don't know. But it will spoil the fun because but okay, knight you have, c4, uh, you have yes. knight c4. But is there a real threat? Yeah, you are threatening knight b6. This is one of those positions, especially what you are looking for now. But you may be right, you may be right mm -hmm. here. You may be right. Maybe I have to play rook d, f. I have to give this guy maybe to play here, yeah? Because Almira is right. I mean, she feels that after here, you are, your pieces are extremely strong with, uh, strongly placed with white, awkward a bit with black here. And for instance, here, let's say I go, I go there, there are already tactical threats like this. And now you take here, let's say, and you have this rook hanging mm -hmm. with the queen. So, I mean, it can be very unpleasant and fast. So probably I have to play rook d8 here. I have to give back there. No, what I wanted to say that uh, very often these days you are looking uh, while you're preparing for for your games and your tournaments, you are looking, uh, especially when you analyze very deeply with the computer, for positions where you can uh, sacrifice a pound, but you will uh, strive for long-term initiative. Okay. And I feel that this might be, of course, you just lost a pound, it could be equal as well, but some of the possibilities might offer you this uh, long-term initiative. Yeah, because here the long-term initiative is on the... Uh, misplaced pieces, awkward pieces. Awkwardly, uh. yes, placed pieces. Okay, so I think that okay, uh, I think the opening phase there, is, so, so is she over. She took, uh, she took. She took, and the knight c5, so here. And so probably if something like rook d1 castle will transpose in what mm -hmm. we said. So we okay. will take a small break right now, and we will we, we will be back. Stay tuned with us. Uh, we will talk more about the former, the uh, the qualification path of the players, the world championship in itself. Igor, I will test you. Like, how many world champions do you know? So, <laughs> did I play or do I know? <laughs> do you know? <laughs> I played some. I so uh, we will be back in uh, like in five to well, in five minutes. I okay, think. stay tuned.
choses comme ça, et à un moment, il me dit... Ça y est, t'es... Bravo. <rire> Bravo. Bravo. <rire> So welcome back to the studio. I Salut. was like <laughs> doing some street dance demonstration for Igor. But here we are gathered to commentate the candidates tournament. Um, in Maybe these are not used that uh, they have a big French accent, no? In the <laughs> commentators. <laughs> commentators. <laughs> commentators, so of course, well, some of us have French accent, you know, so. No, but as I was telling yesterday, uh, I mean, I have this accent because when I was younger, I visited the United States. I was hanging out a lot when I was younger, you know, and I, I, all the time I was speaking with the girls and they were saying, what, what, what? And I was making a lot of eff effort to speak like uh, uh, Oxford English and... Uh, And they were not understanding anything. Then I started to speak like this, and they were saying, oh, it's so cute, so cute. Why should I make any effort? Now I speak like this. <laughs> and uh, and well. since this time, I don't make a single effort about the accent. So this is the sexy French accent, yes? Uh, so this no, is the not cute anymore, French no. accent. I am 44, it's finished <laughs> this time, but <laughs> I kept my accent. So, uh, okay, let's see. It okay, you no, have a few yes, things yes, to say. Yes, I have a few things to say because the candidates tournament uh, this year is organized in a different format. Of course, so Monaco is hosting the um, one of the groups because the players have been divided in two groups. Uh, Monaco is staging the group A where four players are playing. Uh, those players are Hampi Conero, Lei Tinji and the Muzichuk sisters. In the group B, you will have three Russian players. You will have Alexandra Goryachkina, Ekaterina Lagno, Alexandra Kustinyuk, and one Chinese player, uh, Tan Zhongli. You want I say? Uh, Lano, Goryachkina, um, Alexandra Kustinyuk, and uh, Tan Zhongli. Yes. yes, and Alexandra Kustinyuk. Mm -hmm. So, this, which will start a little bit later this year. Um, so. Of course, this uh, tournament, the whole cycle, will determine uh, who is going to face the uh, current world champion, the Chinese player, Zhu Wenjun. Zhu Wenjun. Yeah. And they are fighting, of course, for well, quite an important prize fund. Overall, it's uh, 250,000 euros, and you have separate prize funds for each tournament. But I wanted to... Uh, Well, to talk a little bit about the players and how did they qualify for the candidates, you asked me how old are they, so I think yeah. this is important also to, of to course, know. Of course, because uh, the age is uh, an important factor in chess, about the calculation, about the energy, that, so it's important to know, because I see, for example, the Chinese player that I never met in, in real before here, mm -hmm. She's, she looks young, for instance, I don't know exactly what age, but, uh, and I know some of them from <coughs> the past, so they are a bit older, and, uh, for example, I played with Anna in the same team in Evry in, in 2011, I think, in France, mm -hmm. so uh, she, I know her, and... Okay. So let's start with the players on your screen. You have Han Piconero with white pieces and Anna Muzichuk with uh, black pieces. One of the most important things also when you're playing the candidates um, I wanted to reveal is that did these players have any world championship match experience? And actually both of the players, Anna Muzichuk and Han Piconero, They yes, have already so. played the yes. match and they lost this match for the World Championship title. Uh, Hampi Konero lost her match against uh, Hu Yifan. Yes. And Anna Muzichuk was very close in clinching the title against Tan Zhongyi, but she lost this match as well. So both of them, uh, but in different formats. It was against Tan or it was against Zhu and Jun? No, it was against Tan. I don't no? remember. And Zhu and Jun against whom? I think Katerina Lagno, no? No. Uh, maybe. I yes, don't so you're going to... I don't see. have my computer. <laughs> I, uh, just, uh, I am your computer. <laughs> okay, I hope. Let's, I also hope that. And so, uh, Hampi right. Conner is the only player in the field, like in this field, who, um, who has uh, a child. So she's a mom. She's 35 years old. Um, Anna is 32. So... Does it give her any advantage, as you said, that she was more focused before the tournament, she had more time to prepare? Uh, so I know that they made a few training sessions with her sister, but on the other hand, we all know that uh, Ukraine is affected uh, with the war, yeah. Yes, with the war, yeah. so they had to flee Lviv 
So now uh, Anna and uh, Maria, they live in Spain, yeah. and this also, well, not only can affect their preparation, but also their psychological state, and we all know how difficult it is to play and to concentrate okay, during the, those Okay, on the other hand, it seems to give them a lot of motivation. For example, they won Olympiads lately, so, I mean, it can be in both ways. Yes, this is uh, one of the most impressive results. Especially with chess players, it's always like this. I mean, we rebound and we, we want uh, something, something that, sometimes something that uh, puts us down can also provoke the inverse effect. And uh, Yes, Anna Muzishuk is the fourth woman in history to reach 2,600 hello points. Yeah, before her there was uh, Judith Polgar, of course, Rui Fan, and Umpi Kuno, of course. And are there Juven Jun, she got also 2600 here, yeah? 2606, I think. I was and not uh, sure if it was published, you know, so I, I will have to check this, but... I think from memory that she, she, she got once. And this is a very important barrier, yes, even of course, like psychologically, of I'm, I'm not even talking about professionally, but in, when you break this... Uh, this milestone, you know, 2,600, uh, well... At my time, I had a couple of times very close to it. I mean, 2,596, 2,592, something like this. And once I had more, but unpublished, and uh, then I, I lost the rating, and okay. Okay, and let's have a look at the player's card uh, of her sister. Uh, Maria Muzichuk. Maria Muzichuk is 30 and she is playing against uh, Lei Tinchi, who is the youngest player of this event, uh, in the event organized in Monaco, so she is 25. Yeah, so Maria Muzichuk was the women's world champion in 2015-2016 and reached the semi-finals in the women's world championship in 2018. She earned her spot uh, for the Women's Grand Prix 2022-2023 thanks to her fourth place in the FIDE Grand Suisse 2021 held in Riga. Okay, and she qualified through the Grand Prix, yeah? No, no through rating. Yes, through, through rating. rating. Yeah. Yes, her sister qualified through the World Cup. You know, she was uh, one of the first uh, three finishers. And um, here I have the information which is confirmed. So over 2,600, you had several players. Uh, so don't forget that you did Polgar, Hu Yifan, Hampi Koner, Wano Mazichuk, Ju Winjun, and uh, most recently Goryachkina. Ah, Goryachkina, yes. she had more than, had more okay, than yeah, 2,600. So six so. players in the story, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, well... And Judith, uh, Judith uh, overpassed the, the, the 2700 barrier uh, for quite a few years. A and when it was, it was also extremely hard to get this barrier. So, and Uyi Fan went very close to this barrier. I think 2686 is our peak rating. And uh, many times 2680. Um, yeah, Judith Peak was 27.35 in 2005, yeah. Okay, she stopped a bit to play actively around these years, like Kasparov. Kasparov retired in 2005. I think Judith on the same. Okay, I'm just trying to find out. Yeah, 27.35 from Judith was really exceptional. I mean, she was 25.50, Judith, when she was 12 years old. I mean, she was playing this tour the, those tournaments, I mean, like GMA and, uh, or uh, G, um, what was the Kasparov Association? PCA. PCA. Mm -hmm. In Groningen, I remember. And she was 25, 50, a small kid, and all, all those experienced grandmasters. <laughs> so it was unbelievable. Um, Igor, I wanted also to talk about <clears throat> the games that, um, well, actually the personal scores that the players have against each other. Because ah, this is important. I've course. studied those games um, for a while, and actually the statistics are very interesting because, as you can see, Lei Tinji is uh, the youngest player in this event, but she also doesn't play that many tournaments. So uh, we have only one classical game between uh, Lei Tinji and Maria Muzichuk before, like, the candidate turns. Like, They've played, I think, six games overall, and uh, the rest was played in rapid, and uh, the, the only classical game that we have ended in a draw. 
Because I think anything can happen in a match. As you have said, that um, Maria Muzichuk already won the world championship title. She has much more experience. Do you th who do you think is the favorite in this match? So now that we talked about everything. I, I think the young Chinese, because I am really impressed when uh, somebody wins uh, this tournament like the Grand Suisse, where there is like 100 uh, players or 140 players for the men, 100 I think for the women. When you win such a tournament, it's like if you are a real street fighter a bit, you know, and this is very dangerous. In, uh, I respect a lot this kind of, uh, of play. I mean, uh, when you are not protected, you have to win, and she wins with one, one uh, point ahead of the field. This impresses me much. I mean, Maria is very strong, very strong established grandmaster. Uh, she was almost 2600 and she, 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 I mean, yeah, she's like a strongman grandmaster already. But I feel that this kind of player, like a late, can, can be very unpleasant against, uh, I mean, those street fighters' uh, style. I, so you I, think that she has a slight edge in, uh, well, in this At least when I see the game of today where she's better, or it confirms. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you ask me before, I would say the same. Okay, so then um, what do you think about the second uh, match between... Especially uh, we don't Ampico know much Marianne about China, Mujicu. how they train. It's very silent. I mean, probably I don't know if they train all the day, if they have a school to train. I don't know. The, well, one particularity that I know about the uh, preparation um, of the Chinese players is that they always tend to uh, organize training sessions, but uh, only Chinese players are invited. So compared, like for example, to other nations uh, like India, uh, or Iran, or I, th I know that many coaches went to Dubai. So uh, Chinese players tend to prepare their own between players. Them, yeah. Yes, and between at them. My, at my at my um, time, it was more or less Wang Yu who was the leading, and uh, and um, in general, I had always a very good score against Chinese players, but strong ones. I mean, twenty six hundred on this, and uh, I think I, I didn't lose against them. I maybe won four or five of them. I play also some women uh, like Zhu Yuhua, and, yeah. but uh, yes, in general they were yeah a bit uh, yeah between themselves they trained probably you are right yeah it was uh, this first very strong Chinese uh, grandmaster uh, uh, what's the name uh, Yu um, um, Ye Yongchuang yes mm -hmm. and now probably I Yu think Yang he was at the head of the federation yes. and probably he started to make some. To, to build some system of training. Yeah, for yes, them. but I for example, know. like we know how uh, you build a team of seconds, and very often uh, you you ask very strong players from all over the world. Like for example, when Magnus Carlsen reveals his team, you have players uh, which represent like the world team. But here, I think, and also Lei I think she, she came to this tournament alone. There are still a lot of restrictions, you know, traveling restrictions. You yeah, but then these trainers, by China, yes. she has trainers by internet for sure. For example, with Raja, when we when we we worked a couple of times for candidates, uh, I I never went on the on the tournaments. I mean, it w always we were by distance, and it was as efficient. So probably she does the same. This, but I I would feel like uh, you would need this uh, support of a friend uh, and advice, that's the point. you know, that's, so I think... That, that, that's the only point, because objectively on the pure work, I am more efficient from. But of course on the friendship, on the jokes, and this, it's better. And to better. be alone, yes, it's and not, when you, it's you, not you need, yeah, to, yeah, when you need to pass your time, and uh, yeah, okay, of course it's important. On this aspect, I, uh, this is the, 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 the important aspect. For example, I know that uh, Maxim Vashilagrav, him, he needs people with him to, to spend time, and this, that's why he, he, he called uh, Sebastian Mazé or, or others, I mean, when it was needed. And uh, yeah, some people need, some less. Raja, probably less. <coughs> 
So let's move to the second matchup. We had for a long time Hampi Koneri and Anna Muzichuk um, on our screens. Well, they've played actually a lot of games between each other, and what I was uh, I was surprised to find that actually Anna is leading. You know, like ah, I would have said the reverse, one. but because for very long time, what you have to know is that apart Judith Polgar, that is special. I mean, 2,700 clubs mm -hmm. and this. Humpy was for a very long time the only woman with 2600 and she was a bit dominating the file apart you who apart who even well, well she came but later. all the rest she was regularly dominating winning all the tournaments so I would have said that due to this period she would be leading against Anna but you said the river okay. yes th but the okay. uh, it's very close it's like plus one ah, so it's uh, Anna, yes uh, Anna yeah. won uh, their last classic encounter there were like a lot of draws and they've played uh, they okay. uh, played many games in the rapids so what do you think uh, about this match it, it's not so easy yes to predict. I am a bit afraid of humpy uh, lack of practice okay because as we spoke she's the only one who is mother uh, she married I think uh, some years ago, uh, I saw it, the news on chess base, and uh, so, so I don't know how it affects the family life, on motivation, on training, on practice. You cannot practice as much when you are, uh, when you are, when you are a mom. I mean, uh, especially when your kid is uh, young. So, well, um, I would. I, I, for me, it's the main factor. If she managed to get good training sessions, also practice. I mean, mm -hmm. not only work theory and. Uh, I would just wanted to on look this, at it Anna from maybe have a small advantage from a say, like sort of from the practical yes. point of view. So from a scientific point, like chess point of view, let's say Anna is coming from the Olympiad with an Olympic title. Uh, there she is a huge, much, there is a huge boost often, of confidence. So she plays much more often. While uh, I've looked at uh, Humpy's game during the Olympiad, it was um, th they were quite shaky. You know, that was not yeah. You her feel level uh, you feel still. this when you lack practice. Okay when you like practice so I mean on this point Anna has an advantage but as you say uh, as I want to say the matches are very short for games is very short so if Maybe you win one game it can be also over very fast so. we didn't talk about the format let's say no. that the format has been changed so explain a little bit so we have two matches uh, players play four games yes and then in case of a tie, everything is going to be decided in, well, in during break, the tie the breaks. Mm -hmm. And Which. then the winners of the matches will play each other. So we have the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and then the winner of this group will play the winner of the group B which will be determined uh, like um, uh, in a month. Almira, I just bugged uh, because I saw bishop take h2, your ID. <laughs> so I just, I know, it you were speaking. Transposition, yes. So yeah, it, you were speaking, I just bugged and stopped. I looked bishop h2. Okay, let's go. I didn't hear the last uh, <laughs> words that you say. I was shocked I saw on the TV. So let's see. Let's see, yes. A bit back technique. Uh, we it sorry, reminds I mean, I just uh, I say, oh, it's what you said. Um, no, it reminds me of a phrase Einstein said once because he was having a conversation with a, like a lady and he told her like well but you can speak you know and they can probably you know he was analyzing <laughs> a few theories in his no no head. what is interesting is that we spoke about this uh, this possibility to play very active and give h2 and it was like a brilliant uh, concept from you uh, some minutes ago before the break and uh, I liked it actually at first I said no you should not and this and when I saw queen b8 I said first First sentence I said is, how do I protect? And you said, maybe we don't need to protect. Then we started to check. Mm -hmm. And finally, it's what's happening on the board. And probably it's interesting, yeah? Queen b8. So you play d takes c5. Mm -hmm. Now queen c6 checked. We said rook d1, there would be castle. So now I guess what, king e7, no? Should be the move. OK. Now she played what, knight d2. So in general, those positions should be fine for black, but black has to play accurate. What is the accurate move here? Something like queen b7, maybe, to trade the queen? Ah, queen b7. So, oh, so you take knight b7 and you protect also the Probably bishop queen on b7 the six. Oh, this is such a nice move. Should be the move, huh? So you just denaturalize the initiative of you your take, opponent you at take. any cost. 
Well, she was maybe afraid of bishop b2. Then you go f6. I mean, even f6 here is possible, you know, when the queens Black are traded. Black should be fine in general. Knight c4. The then? king is well placed in the. Placed. When placed in the in the end game. And well, we're at bishop c7. So what is the like the last bishop precise check, move here? So yeah, bishop yeah, c5 be maybe. Because mm -hmm. yeah, was otherwise bishop a3 check is uh, waiting for us. But bishop c5 a3. Yeah, may, yeah, but then do you have a5? Because it's not so easy now to go back to b5, huh? Mm -hmm. No, that's uh, perfect. I like setup. black actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So bis queen b7 was actually queen possible. Queen b7, I position. think, was the the move. Maybe she was a bit afraid of this position, but ac actually, as you said, one or two precise move and it's over. I mean, the pressure is over. Yeah. Here, bishop c5 is important because bishop c7, you go bishop <coughs> a3 check, and what you don't want at all with uh, black is to get a shattered structure with uh, three islands. You don't want to play something like this, where there is a very good knight against a very bad bishop, three islands for black against two islands for white, which is uh, less weaknesses. Do you, did you, do you know like how we call those types of positions, like with bishop c5 uh, during our childhood? This, like We didn't have a lot of horror movies, so like from a chess point of view, this is a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with a6 and c5 and this beautiful knight on c4. But uh, Igor, I wanted to tell you, I, I had an interesting thought, you know, on this, because how uh, computers change the way we think. I think that maybe like even a few years ago, Anna was almost, would almost always look for queen b7 to neutralize the initiative. And since computers push the position so much farther and they take well, so much risk now. So she probably decided to go for the position which is much more dangerous. Yeah, and she wouldn't me, even look at it yeah, before. Yeah, but me, I have a, a conception about this is that I will play as a position where I am able to find the moves. I mean, so me, even if computer says me it's equal or things like this or I have to find very difficult move. I would not enter. I would enter something where I'm a bit worse and I can play it. So she actually went for uh, bishop h2, yes, in this line? Yeah, she, yeah, she's taking a lot of risk. She underestimated, I think, White's initiative. Yeah, that you didn't underestimate <laughs> some minutes ago. I'm also an old fox. <laughs> so, <laughs> No, but this is, uh, I'm, I was at the good school, you know. <laughs> French school, French school, we, <laughs> we give those points. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, rook c8, queen f3 then, yes, probably uh, the only move in this position. She, she played rook c8, huh? she decided that before taking on h2, she activates the rook. Which, is, which looks normal, because the queen is quite uh, um, unpleasant here, I mean, for the pressure. Mm -hmm. So let's see, so sh she played rook c8, queen f3, now she took on h2 check, king h1. And now, as Almira said, the point is that we, ga we gave a pawn, but our pieces will immediately become extremely dangerous. I mean, rook c1, rook d1 will come, and knight c4 will come, and you have problems to get some... Um, peace coordination, actually. Peace coordination, yes. actually. Mm -hmm. Because you want to go out with the queen, but be careful, the, the bishop is hanging. So you have first to come back with the bishop, but then you will go on a square where a knight will attack you, or you will be on a square where you close everything. So it's not easy. So maybe on e5, but then you are also under attack later by knight c4. You have problems where to put back your pieces, and uh, but this position is even worse than the one we analyzed because the king was somewhat safe. I'm not sure on g8 on or e7, but the position that we analyzed, the king was uh, on g8. We castled, was castled. We yes. castled, and still I didn't like it for black. And now the king. And is here on it's a much worse version. Mm -hmm. so no, probably here is the very critical point where Anna had a very decent position after queen b7, probably equal, if she played two or three still precise move, but now I don't like it. 
I don't she like it. She came back six. where? She came back on d6, but now she's under knight c4. So is it knight c4 immediately? Or should you play something like rook d1 first? And Igor, as you rightfully said, for example, it's so much easier to play this position uh, with white because all the moves are very natural, uh, whereas like on the black side, you will have to find those moves and you, will, you wanted to... Uh, and you explained that you and in would general, under such a pressure, at minimum, you will have to go get back to, to give back the pawn under bad circumstances. So when white gets back the pawn, he will be still much better. It's not only I take back, I equalize, I get back my pawn, everybody happy with draw. No, 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 no. White will continue to have the initiative. So and it can, yeah, it can be much worse than just the pawn. Oh, you, it's like our moves this are is the so problem. crystal clear. We put the rook on we D1, We have a problem on there, and, and even we have a problem with the king when the king is coming back, that h7 then can be hanging because you don't have rook h8 if the king is, let's say, on f8. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, have, you may have a king problem, but there is a big problem, traffic jam there, mm -hmm. with knight c4 coming. But what happened after knight c4 then? I don't know if we have, because the only problem what I don't like here yet is that my rooks are a bit uh, passive. Mm -hmm. So should I attack right now or should I maybe put a rook into play? I would like to put a rook into play. But like, uh, here is like the existential question, which rook were? Like, <laughs> so rook fd1 is the most natural move, but then do you want to uh, bring your rook to c1? No, no or rook c1. Double I, the rooks on the d file. Rook c1, I am not sure I will play it because mm -hmm. I am a bit afraid of knight d3, no? No, but I mean rook d1, knight c4, and then do you put your, put your rook on the c file or you double on the d file? I think I am winning already after knight c4. So there will not <laughs> be even this question. If I manage rook d1, knight c4, already it's over. No, but rook d1, <laughs> then I can maybe start with bishop e5. Can I, or it's already losing? Let's see, rook d1. Okay. Because just one thing, if you start with rook c1, just to prevent all those bishop e5 and this, I am a bit afraid that this may work somewhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't at all. Huh? But you take on d6, like take c8, bishop d6, so your king yeah, is yeah, on yeah, d6, sure, sure, I'm sure, afraid. Sure, I'm sorry, afraid. Sorry. Like I thought that first you take on d6 and queen d6. Mm -hmm. And then I was checking queen b7 check, queen d but there is none of this. You no, take no, on c8 first, first okay. and yeah. Ah, okay, so which move is there now? Queen b7 then or what? No, queen b7 doesn't work still because uh, bishop c5. No, I think you want to play king f8 anyway, so you could play bishop e7 after knight c4. So maybe that's so why she this, played yeah. knight c4, yes. What do you do here? Maybe is this one, bishop e7 next. To all is the pressure, huh? But still, uh, there knight is this C4, tactical thing, the uh, trick, knight c4, and you can take on b6, no? Yeah, but you will equalize maybe simply. Ah, this is just equal. I will. Uh, no, 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 no. This what, what, no, no. What we are losing here. Oh, no, we don't have enough. Uh, you can take with the queen. No, knight c4, what yes. do we do? Mm -hmm. But what after bishop b7? Why is this like? Maybe you have to give the bishop something like rook. I don't know, rook, c rook a7 maybe, your move now. I don't like no. because here you have b4. It's very simple, like yes, uh, trick. Yes, yes. So knight d6. Let's we sometimes yeah, but we're we too no. We have to show sometimes the simple variations on the board. So like put rook a7 back, knight d6. No, first knight d6 and, and then b4 European, and European, European of course. European, so, European. And you're losing a piece. So, um, no, I wanted to play bishop b7, but our combination doesn't work. So they're like but knight, like knight b6, b6. Right? No, because you can play with the, uh, you can take with the um, queen on c5 at the end. And it doesn't work. So bishop c5, bishop, show it like. Okay, take. Queen b6, bishop c5, bishop c5. Rook c5, queen c5, and then uh, you don't have to take with the rook. So I don't even equalize. So there should be maybe like bishop b7. I like this move. And then um, we cannot find anything concrete. So bishop b2 then. Mm. Bishop b2, can you play? I think that uh, this is the position where you have to be very concrete. If you don't 
come up with a follow-up, so uh, maybe your uh, ah, advantage... you maybe have uh, some tricks, no? You maybe have some queen take a8. Oh, queen take a8? I knight b6 and then take on set and maybe then b4. Maybe one day I will wake up. <laughs> <laughs> this is this, this. And not like this, yes? I don't know if this or b4 first, but... Something like this. But Oh, this, this is unpleasant, huh? Of course, this is such a nice position uh, for white. So, no, no, now I understand, of course. Yes, Queen A8 is a very. No, no, it's tricky. Idea. It's very tricky because there are always things like this in the air. Yeah, Knight C4 and Queen A8 should be, uh, should be very unpleasant. I mean, you get back the two rooks and you get back the. the so, after three coffees and a few energy drinks, finally you find the Queen A8. I am not sure because two moves ago I missed before, you know, and. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the 1,500 level moves I miss, but the 2,800 I find. But it's like playing the tournament in the same way. The commentators, for them, the first game is a test because it also sh shows like in what shape you are at the beginning of the tournament. For players, it's like it's a very important test, especially uh, like for players, Muzichuk sisters, they have black pieces. Um, it's important not to lose this game because, the, as you have said, the, the match is relatively short. If you lose one game, uh, it, it would be very, very difficult like, to, uh, to come back. So of course, you have only three games to come back. And uh, even, you know, in the much more long matches of Magnus Carlsen, let's say against Caruana or against Karyakin, I mean, already they were not wanted to take risks too much because one game, for them, it was almost impossible to come back, and this, when it was maybe six or eight games left. Of course, so. and I also remember like when Magnus Carlsen made uh, a very quick draw against um, uh, Sergei Karyakin, and you know he didn't want it like at the last round, even though that he had white pieces, because he considered that it was mathematically an optimal decision, so he didn't want to risk it all, like in this last game, and to play another match, uh, the tiebreaker in, in rapid. Yeah, because in tiebreaker he had four games, so he saw Another that four, four uh, games, yes, of course. Which so. was a very risky decision, I can tell you, because at the time, in 2016, Karyakin was very strong in uh, both rapid and, uh, in, in, and blitz. I mean, and you see some months later, uh, Magnus Carlsen won the World Championship in Rapid and Karyakin won the Blitz. I can tell you that it would be Blitz, it would be another story. And uh, you know, I was uh, completely, un for me it was completely unclear. But finally Magnus showed class and won the match, but uh, in Rapid, I mean, it was not so easy. I mean, it was two and a half, one and a half, I think. So, um, because, uh, I know, maybe it was 3-1, he won the last two. No, no, yes, I, uh, but I just... Uh, I want okay, let's see, so let's see there. To, to have a few moves. Ah, ah but actually we have only one move left. Yeah, so the, she took, bishop d6, knight c4. King f8 she played. Shit, it will be my uh, queen. What? What's like... <laughs> what happened? It's losing or what? But how? How do you see that it's losing? Ah, okay, yes, I forget, I forget that we have the... You forgot my move already? No, I forgot that you we forgot have the... You forgot my queen take eight already? No, Short I turn. forgot that we have the no. evaluation bar. You know, that's what we call an yeah, evil this, bar. This, evil this, bar. this, this stresses, stresses us, yeah? Yes, so I... Uh, rook d1 here, yeah, probably, or what? I mean rook a d1, okay. Or fd1, should be the same, no? B should be seven, and what's the idea then? Mm -hmm. Why is it uh, losing? Ah, maybe you Take infiltrate this second. Yes, rook d7. No. Okay, very simple uh, positional decision. No, I wanted to take with, uh, with, with the, the pawn. No, with the pawn, yes. No, no, leave your bishop on the seven. So, very simple positional this decision. Is completely mm -hmm. It's possible she missed this. And rook fd1 the same or what? Uh, bishop b7 still. Mm -hmm. mm. Still take, bishop takes c5 and uh, rook d7. Rook d7 is completely mm -hmm. lost. I mean, maybe she wants to take this way, but now even knight b6. Ah, here you can take knight b6, of course. So knight, knight b6. Knight b7 check, I mean, good luck, yeah. But you see how difficult those positions are in the queen's uh, game? We, I, we told you, we, 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 we told them, I mean, uh, when they took on h2, it's very tricky. 
But also, like, I think it's the spirit of the position. You accept from the very first moves that, okay, of course, uh, it's the professional preparation that you only play for two results, and uh, like you explained that uh, you're more likely to make a draw, but uh, you are not so familiar with the opening. Even if you've studied it so, so well, for, for a while you didn't play enough games to seize all the nuances. Yeah, that's the problem of modern preparation, of course, that now they have to play ev sorry. Now they have to play everything. And the problem is that you are not you, you, you didn't play games at the board and you, you don't feel the, ga the the position at all and you will play some bad moves at some point. I mean you know more or less everything, but as you didn't play, you didn't practice, you are not a specialist, you you are making mistakes here, of course. And just before we switch to another game, uh, Igor, I, well, look at, uh, at the Rundi clock. Rundi yes, Rundi but Rundi. 16 yeah. minutes left for Hampi Kunero. Yeah, but she has only one move to make. And I can tell you for a positional player to find... Okay, she... she yeah, there is no rook h5 check. I mean, the queen is there, so... I mean, for a positional player to find bishop takes c5 is extremely easy, I have to tell you. And... Um, Yes, one word about the time control, because I was not sure uh, ah, yeah. <coughs> that we would use the same time control as uh, what used uh, during the uh, candidates tournament in Madrid. Here we actually use the universal tournament time control, which is like 90 minutes uh, for 40 moves plus 30 second increment. And uh, after 40 moves, players get 30 minutes more and uh, 30 seconds increment till the end of the game. So you don't have then any more additional time. The, like You don't seal the game, you don't adjourn the game, so it's, uh, it will be a much faster time control. So uh, this is the position on the board. Uh, but of course, one thing is to... Uh, we can go to it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> no, one thing is to analyze these games, to sacrifice these pieces are not ours. Another thing is to make uh, those moves under uh, pressure. Course. So Hampi knows that if she will win this game, uh, well, it might be decisive already. So but she, you know, it's she's hesitating. Yeah, but probably it's a um, it's, uh, strategy of Anna to play faster because maybe she knows that Hampi has no more, not much practice. She will maybe doesn't have a, a, um, an optimal um, time management. And she hopes to make some pressure in time travel in an unbalanced position. Maybe this is why she took on h2. But in fact, no, no, none of those things will work if bishop takes c5. Now, now it's, uh, I think computer says it's completely losing. Yeah? I, mean, I have to, 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 to plug my uh, fox uh, eyes. <laughs> to see the evaluations. Igor, let's switch bishop to... Bishop takes c5, yeah? Yes, for the moment I think that bishop it's c5... It's lost normally. Bishop Computer here will say, I, I, I see now, he says that bishop takes c5, it's plus four something, yeah? So. Well, I, I wouldn't be that categorical, but I, I can... What okay, I can probably say that she will take with the rook, is, I hope. Uh, I mean, I think that she will play for some rook h5 check, if she can. Mm -hmm. Now what, knight take b6, right? Yes, but knight b6, you, you have knight d7 then, so... Knight d7 yes, check yes. is extremely unpleasant. Is there a move here? She has to give the exchange. Yes. Yeah. Okay, 7. No, no th this is completely lost. This is so, completely Yes, of course. So. Then white remains active with the remaining pieces, and it's very easy to, to shut down this threat. I mean, you just play g3, king g2, and that's it. One thing that I remember, do you know what uh, Hampi Kunero did, like, after uh, not playing for two years and... Um, playing her first uh, World Rapid Chess Championship, like she won it. So she's, like, she's, she's a very strong player, I think also like when... Uh, in Rapid, you mean? Yes, in when, Rapid. When small time left? When uh, okay, she has very little it, time left. We have to, to, be, to, to explain to, to the viewers that, that uh, um, Rapid Chess is not the same like under pressure, because under pressure you have much, much more at, at stake. And all what you did in the year, and this depends on those 10 minutes, when in rapid chess you don't care. I mean, it's one game among others. So it's completely different. You are much, much more under stress uh, in a normal in a game uh, when you are in time trouble. So let's have a quick look at the other game, because 
Humphrey has so it's a blunder. Huh? What is bishop e seven is a blunder. Huh? Probably, but, but, but no, I think already. that this position is King very unpleasant. King F8 is the blunder. What was the best move here? It was still possible to save or not? Mm. I would offer my move, like which uh, I suggested earlier, rook, rook a7, a7 and maybe rook d7, something like but to rook protect a7, uh, rook the rook seventh rank. Maybe. maybe rook c1? Or not? No, rook, rook c1, rook d7, yes, to hold like this. Do you think it is possible to well, I think hold it's for a, a while? Big pressure, here? Big pressure, I think. Mm -hmm. When you start to go, the, there is always this trick. You take twice and before. Mm -hmm. huh? If you go there, it's what we did earlier when I was a bit sleepy. When I was a bit sleepy, <laughs> you were tricking me like this. <laughs> so now I understood. So you know the, you know no, all no, the tactical motives the, 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 in the, the game. The, yes. Uh, yes. Okay, let's go to... to okay, so normally to it's lost. I mean, just... Uh, Igor, there are some, a few moves I can see which were made uh, on the board, and uh, let's have a look here. She, she found something? She played, on, she played bishop c5, she did it. Okay, and then she took with the pawn, and so posi positionally it's completely mm -hmm. lost, yes. This is such an opening disaster, really. Uh, I didn't expect it... Uh, Knight d6 is already uh, so quickly. Knight d6 is already a threat. Can you tell me <laughs> what move is it uh, now? Fox eyes 22. So it's we are close to a minute. Yeah, but it's exactly what we spoke about. It's that now we are specialist in everything, and we are also specialist in nothing at the same time. I mean, we know a bit of everything, but we can't play anything correctly. That's the problem. All those young people who play 1e4, 1d4, or who plays every opening, in fact, they know nothing. I mean, if you don't fall in their, wall li their, their main line, if, you, if they have to play a game, they will play it very badly because they will have no idea about the opening at all. And, uh, of course, if you play what they, what, what they looked for five hours with their compi, it's another story. But Okay, so now let's switch. Okay, normally this should be should lead to a win by Ompi Conero. It's uh, yeah, very important for first round. Okay, now what happens? Where, Here where, we where stopped. did we leave it? So yes, it, what? Ah, so she went for a four. For your <laughs> <So> move. <laughs> surprising. <laughs> we stopped d6, so uh, it was my move. And now King G2, and she decides to do the same. Yeah, we were leaving there, saying that castle may be near. But here, of course, she has to do the same, artificial castling. But the, nah, this is tricky, because also you want to... Now you, now, now you don't want anymore to put the knight here due to the bishop on d3. Mm -hmm. So, okay, in general, this is correct to play King F8, and then either you let it here, if you can find something for the rook, maybe, or you play like she did this and this. She did what? She started with g6. So g6 was played. Should be a good mm -hmm. move, yeah. Was king f8 possible here or not? To be honest, uh, I didn't even consider g6, but uh, this position um, uh, is not, knight b5, it's not easy yeah. also for, yeah, but knight b5, for, yeah. for black to find useful moves. So you have to come up with a with a concept or, or a plan. Yeah, but probably, you know, in such positions, there are only a couple of ideas that those players, they know. I mean, it's, you know, those thematical ideas in structure with h take g6. I mean, I would play Slav, I would know all of them, for sure. Knight f8, g6, g6, king f8, king g, g7, g5, then g6. I mean, they know. But then also... Because I it's not so easy to get to the pawn on g5. I mean, the only way to get is there to is what is e4, the and then yes. yeah, you break in the center, but also you get this isolated pawn on d4. Mm -hmm. I mean, knight e2, g1, f3 is much too slow, and you have knight e4 all the time when you need. So okay, but then I think that uh, late Tinji, she chosen uh, like a, a very dynamic approach. Yeah, but probably G6 she has two, because remember, she has the two bishops. She's waiting for them to play, so probably she if she managed to open the position uh, in a good way, she, the two bishops will be... The point is that you cannot open it uh, any time. You have to choose the right moment. 14 minutes for Maria and 29 but minutes for But Maria was worth some time a lot. <coughs> but, uh, okay, Queen E2. You see, she doesn't rush to play E4. 
but we didn't rush either. We analyzed exactly Queen E2, but with the king, uh, well, is, that, the is it better or maybe on here to go E4? I don't know. So let's e4, see. E4, take mm -hmm. immediately. Take. Just, uh, well, the bishop, like G5 is hanging, so we are almost yeah, but G5, forcing. Yes, yeah, but G5 is not possible because this is. No, no, I know, of course. So but then take. Now you're forced to take on E4. There is yeah, no way take, to take. And now we don't have, for example, knight F6 due to bishop G5. Let's, and the problem is that this is hanging. And the problem is that the queen cannot come to protect because g5 was also hanging. We have a problem. And if you play b6, think a bit more the knight. So maybe she should try also uh, to g5. give up a pawn and to activate her pieces, like so you king tried f8. in our analysis, something like this. So bishop b7 and then uh, rook b8 or... Uh, Something more active. Yeah, but the position opens. Yes. And now it will start to be when you will take some bishop c3, d5. I mean, I don't know where I Yes, could especially the... after g6. Now bishop c3, d5, you know, that was. Uh, yeah, but first we have to find where we put this because then the knight may win tempi on it. I mean, if you go on f3. But you cannot, you cannot take on b2. Let's say I play bishop f3, rook b2, bishop c3. And d5 immediately. Yeah, and then or even d5 I or bishop e5, mm -hmm. but yeah, then I will take on. Maybe you can. Let's see. Bishop b2. Mm -hmm. <gasps> the game is over. Okay, let's break in news. Yeah, I yes. think that the game is over. Hampi Connor won her first game against Oof. Anna Muzichuk and. Uh, she didn't see knight d6, that we said. This is a disaster, Igor. Right? She take and take there and resign. Yeah. Yeah, for first game, it's terrible. Okay, she has still two times white. Yeah, but you know what provoked this? What provoked this? It's exactly moment. I find my mouse again. Well, yes. <laughs> we have a few screens to deal ah, with. Yeah, yes, found, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Now, here what provoked this is this choice of bishop h to check. Yes, of course. But here, exactly, she should be reasonable and quite happy with queen b7. She would not lose this. But that's what we were talking about. You know, you consider so, like, the spectrum of the moves that you consider when you, like, uh, analyze a given position is much enough. Seven would be played immediately by, like, a player who was formed by, like, a Soviet chess school and and because you were, we've always thought that you should neutralize the initiative of your home. But now the computers have well, taught us that sometimes you can take this uh, poisonous on the way with it. But this was certainly not the best uh, in this position. But uh, it, means it means that takes things uh, away.
Welcome back to our studio in Monaco. We are live from the Monaco uh, Cercle de Chèque de Monte Carlo, so Monaco Chess Club, and uh, we are commentating the candidates tournament. I think the well, we have already one game which is finished. So uh, Hampi Conero won against uh, Anna Muzichuk, and the second game has reached its critical stage, I think, also. Um, Lee Tingji is playing against uh, Muzichuk Maria, and I think that uh, Muzichuk Maria is already in a severe time trouble. Yeah, and also a uh, very bad position. Okay, let's have a look at the positions. So we neglect we neglected this game for a while because uh, the first game ended. It uh, was about to finish. I mean, it was something very, very quickly, very, very hot happening in the position. Mm -hmm. so. so this is the actual position on the board. Uh, let's just have a look how uh, we reached this position. So uh, late maybe in just in let's estimate this very fast, and then we come back because uh, still Umpi, uh, not Umpi, Lei Tingye uh, has uh, 25 minutes. So. I think that, okay, there is equal points, but we have a problem still of coordination. The king didn't go there yet, so, I mean, the rook here, there may be tactical problems. And look at this knight on b2. Uh, the, la the last move is knight take b2. Mm -hmm. What about knight e2 here? Knight e2 is to profit from the lack of coordination, mm -hmm. you know, so there is no, uh, I mean, uh, it's not so easy to defend the guy here, I guess. Yes, you're also losing the f4 pawn. No, I play knight e2, of course, because the obvious queen take f4 files to knight d3, uh, of course. So fails, that's why. Fails. So I play knight e2 to mm -hmm. take the knight, because people will ask why you don't take the uh, Okay, because of the, the d3 square. Mm -hmm. uh, now what? White is clearly better here, though. even though if you're not looking like at some and, tactical and solution. But even the knight may be in danger, actually. Uh, the knight on b2. That's exactly what I wanted to say. Like, we know that we will win the f4 pound, but then what worries me the most in this position is the knight on b2. It's uh, it's very awkward. Let's say g5. This looks very bad. I mean, uh, but I don't know. Sometimes you have a queen check there. Um, it's work. Probably it's not working at all. But tactically, can you just take and queen e5? But there may be a queen b7 check or something. Naturally, you know, after knight e2, I would give up the pawn and I would play maybe queen. something like rook b8. I, I don't want, you know, to bring another rook into play and... Uh, you take and rook c1, I think. Mm. It looks the best because the rook h1 doesn't play. No, but I want to play rook b8. I have to give up the pawn. You don't play g5? No, no, no. Okay, if no, g5 no. probably take, take rook c1 and you have too many problems with the knight, with the king, queen e5 one day maybe, I don't know. The queen e5, it will depend if he has those, those checks there. And sometimes f3 check, be careful also, because rook take h3. Or maybe I can play knight c4 and give... Here? No, no, before. Like, no, no, I don't like this position. You shouldn't bring another rook into okay, play. Okay, so, so knight c4? Knight c4, then just give... You will take on f4 and then king g7, just finish the development. Finally. Mm. Okay, you just have, well, you're a healthy pawn up in this position. Okay, still you have to convert, but she can take her time, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody is, sh should she play d5 here, maybe? Before that the rook starts to play? Mm. Ah, okay, you threaten uh, rook c4. c4. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I play e5? Rook c so I'll take, take, I'll take on f4. This is not ideal, of course, but then you'll give queen d4 check, maybe. No, d1. Ah, no, maybe on queen d4 check I can play queen f6, and my king is rather close to the d pawn, so I'm not sure that uh, this is easily winning, the, uh, the rook ending, which uh, yeah. e5. Let's just check the variations. So you take on c4. What do you think about this, rook c4? There are also moves like this or not? Or knight d6, you are. Knight g6, so I haven't seen this yet. <laughs> it's a last minute trick. No, yes, but it knight may d6, not work. Uh, it may not work. Knight d6 or something. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like knight d6, but maybe maybe rook c8, we can continue. Or this is a yeah, tactical yeah, skirmish. Should win. Yes. Should win. Should win. Then take there, then. 
Ah, because you threaten also like queen a5. But why can't you take queen a5 first and king g6? Yes, this is this was your idea. Like uh, not rook c8, but queen a5. You take king g6 uh, simply. Yes, that's the uh, no, I knight didn't g6. Check, but, uh, I, I, I think that mm -hmm. queen a5, uh, simply king g6. Mm -hmm. But this even holds, here, yeah? yes. Maybe, yeah. Maybe tactically it holds. Yeah, but you take on c8 first. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's then it means you have to take. But take is losing, yeah? Knight take. Yes, but here you don't have, yes, you don't, you don't have queen d4 more. Like, you don't have queen, six, queen f6 anymore, and you have such so a powerful knight. So e5 is knight. only move? And if I take, you said what? You I say? take. So you take. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to take on f4, and I, I didn't know how to evaluate this position. And so queen d4, I wanted to play queen f6, but maybe you can take queen f4. Queen f4, I will take king d5. Queen d4 looks more normal. Queen f6, I wanted to play. Yes. I know something like this. And I mean, I don't take immediately. You will have three check, I don't care, I play here. Mm -hmm. Ah, you mean that after rook d8 you will play d6, or what do you Yeah, mean? I will advance mm -hmm. probably, and I will win the end game at the end. So when we start the end game, you will have the rook very okay. passive. So you have a closer look at the board. Uh, late in g, played... What did she play? Knight e2 is very interesting, huh? mm -hmm. probably. Okay, so let's she see played what... She played knight e2, I think. She yes. played knight e2? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, she played knight e2. Knight and e2 so is very unpleasant because you don't have queen d6, which would be a normal move. How did how did they get there? Actually, we yeah, left the see. game after. And if a knight, before. if uh, if you give, let's say you play here. Now what? I take. Can mm -hmm. she just ignore things or? Simply queen f six. Like queen f six. Mm -hmm. But g five still. It's very unpleasant, huh? Especially with little time, you are pound down. Okay, here the structure maybe is a little bit different since after e5, I'm forcing you to. Yeah, because to, the problem is that knight. you can never take there because all the time you have a problem on this diagonal. I mean, you have to move the queen and then some check. I don't even speak about the knight, I mean, I speak about the king. Here with the knight, it's even better, of course. So e5. And, well, knight d3, I, well, you'll trade your more active knight, so maybe knight d2 back. Yeah. To me, it looks very unpleasant. Palm down, but... Of course, she can still fight, but it's very unpleasant. This is clearly better for me. Of course, it still remains technical. Huh? Some queen somewhere. Okay, so we we stopped there, yeah. Mm -hmm. When uh, it was before the break. Now she played e4. She opened. Now she's threatening bishop take g5. She took, and now she took with the bishop. Brilliant move. with the bishop. Actually, this is a very interesting positional decision because we were analyzing um, this variation and almost uh, always, like automatically, we were taking uh, only four with the knight. So she decided to um, give up her bishop pair and... Uh, but with what, I want to understand something. With what she takes back if knight takes e4? Ah, knight maybe with the queen then. Because knight e4, you have bishop e7. Yeah, that's why I wanted to check. And if you take with the queen, if I just protect, let's say, uh, with queen b6 or something. Mm. Okay, let's have a look at this position. Queen bishop b6, g5, bishop, bishop g5. g5. So you, uh, 
So I have to play away. Yeah, your hands, your hands are tight here. So you let's. So she wants something like this. We need yeah? to put the take position on the board and take with the queen. Mm -hmm. In fact, so the problem is that blacks would like to play something like this, but then he abandons this pawn, which we, which is much more important than this b2 because it's near the king. We can check, but take there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Take here. Here, don't forget that I can also play rook b1, rook c1, and yeah. your rook is hanging. So that's yeah, the yeah, tactical yeah, idea yeah, behind here the... You yes, here, you cannot yeah. take there. Ah, but be careful which rook. No, it's, yes, of course. Rook <laughs> yeah, no, you have to play this one. Because <laughs> if you play the other rook, you lose h3. Don't forget what you call the long moves. <laughs> this is a perfect example. Okay. So, uh, yes, and if the queen moves... And if the queen uh, moves, the rook is hanging rook behind. Is hanging, so Sometimes you have a positional idea, but which is justified by a tactical solution at the end. But you, you see, she goes e4. She doesn't let black finish the coordination with king g7. e4 comes very timely. I mean, white profits from the lack of coordination, and it will not last long. It's, it must be now or at the move before. So she plays e4, and when she takes, I take with the bishop, I hit the pawn here and here. So I don't have time to play king g7. I have to react. Mm -hmm. She reacts by taking, I think, huh? queen take, and I still hit the pawn. So you don't have time to go king g7. And the final position we saw, we saw that there, are st there is still this problem of coordination because she never had time to solve it, which is important, I mean. She accepts this positional... Uh, uh, drawback of uh, isolating pawn because black cannot profit from it. He has too many short-term problems. Yeah, there are problems with dynamism. White is too active, so it's more important that the pawn structure here. Especially that you can always, in this position, put push d5. So it's like it's also exactly a short, it's a short one of the way here. to get rid of the positional uh, of the of the isolated pawn is, of course, one of the way is to advance it sometimes, and you do it when. After the opening of the position, your piece will be more dominating, which is the case here for white. So in the worst case, she has d5, but I think she doesn't even have to care about it. So now there are a problem, because there is a problem. The, the, the pawn on b7 is hanging, and in case of queen b6, we said g5 is hanging. So you have to play knight b6. She has to give this pawn mm -hmm. queen b7 is very to try natural. to get active with knight c4, you know, and it's probably what happened, yeah? She took. Bishop f4. She didn't want to play knight c4, yes? Because I think there was bishop g5. Exactly. I see the various like small tactics exactly. and you after see... After knight c4, <laughs> after knight c4, there is bishop take g5. And there is an overloading about the queen. Mm -hmm. She can't take back and protect at the same time. And all of this because I didn't play king g7 yet. All these tactics works due to this. So she take on b7, now she played bishop f4. She takes, I take, and play queen e4 back. I bring back the queen from the danger zone, and I was protecting d4 actually. Because by playing bishop f4, don't forget that you open the queen on d4. So take, take. Queen e4, knight so c4. So I would actually, if I would make like a small judgment, this position I wouldn't play uh, knight c4 because we know that this idea of playing knight c4 and taking the pawn back, knight b2, uh, has left black with uh, discoordinated pieces and she still didn't, well, cast, like artificially didn't play king g7. So we know that maybe, okay, you sacrificed the pawn, so you have to... Uh, Finish some I don't like this move, knight c4. Yeah, but the problem is this is hanging. No, but then I, w I wanted to play queen, queen, queen f6. Maybe this is possible. Is this possible? Maybe it was better. <coughs> Just at least to um, to neutral neutralize the uh, the initiative of white species, which, no, I have to bring which the comes walk. after d5. Probably I have to bring the walk. Mm-hmm. And king g7 here, let's see. Can we hold this position? Can you play knight c4 here or not? Or maybe it's not even, uh, I don't know, is it a threat? Mm, I'm not even sure if it's a threat, but... I 
Ah, you mean if we if we start with d5 here, you will simply play e5 and then knight d6, and then uh, this Maybe. will not be so clear. Or even knight b2. Ah, knight b2 and the knight on c3 is hanging. No, no, so no, maybe no. you have to protect mm -hmm. it first. It's so not so easy, I mean, what do I do here? Yeah, but I understand what you mean. You, you had to take care about your lack of coordination to improve pieces. It was maybe better than to go to, the, to take material, like her sister did, actually. Bishop take h2. She does a bit the same, problem, the, the same uh, kind of mistakes. She goes, uh, instead of completing development, even to suffer with the pawn down, she starts to go all in and uh, with no pieces. Also, the, there was another factor that you had to take into consideration. I, th I really think that the knight is better on b6 because if you leave and you will attack my pawn yeah. like on f4 by playing knight e2, then you will jump into d5 and, and this all. is a very nice outpost. So I, I wanted to keep also it there. Also, it costs the time, the tempo mm -hmm. to play it. It's and just a tempo, while here it's a useful tempo. I, d I really don't like this maneuver. I mean, I understand that from Is a there a difference if you start with King G7? Yeah, King G7, you lose the pawn. Of course. Secure pawn down, your position well, is well, holding but on a threat, and you want to get this pawn back. I understand that. So you saw something which is uh, concrete, and you played knight c4, knight b2, but then you're left with. You can go here as well. I don't know what's the difference, but. And go the same. Or not? Ah, yes, so you wanted to, but if I play um, the same, uh, rook d1, because... G7, the, I can, or not? But then I want to play d5. It can works. I play d5 here? Maybe, yeah. Rook c4, some things like this. Mm -hmm. Queen f3. I have to take. Yes, and then I will, yes, will win at Tempe, but maybe this position is much easier to defend than the, what they have in the game. So. You know, they play here. Okay, she's a pound down, but big technical problems. Mm -hmm. Maybe she should play the, something like this, or your queen f6, I mean. Here she should be more careful with those things. Okay, so let's see. Uh, yeah, let's so she played knight c4, so it's a bit careless. Huh? A bit like this bishop take h2 in the, in the, in the game of our system. Uh, let's say uh, if we uh, establish the parallel between the two moves, uh, both, both moves, even if, like you can call them careless, but they're very responsible. So when you are playing bishop h2 or knight c4... Or it's careless with the king. Yeah, with the king, of course. But uh, when you play those moves, like the variation, we will come back to uh, uh, the game also, to the other game between Hampi Kunero and Anna Mezichuk. We'll try to explain uh, uh, what was the uh, decision-making like mechanism uh, behind the bishop h2. And But you have to be sure about your variation, uh, like 100%. But from what I understand, it's, it's, she doesn't see immediate finish for white. And she wants not. She doesn't want to play with pound down, and she, she, she wants to keep it alive, uh, materially speaking. So, uh, it's what, what but I that's say. the same. It's like the same, like knight c4, knight b2. You want to get your pound back. You don't that's want what I say. Yeah, uh, I think it was a better strategy to let the pound go and to consolidate and to play with the pound down, but compensations. Because then knight c4 is coming, or attacking on d4, maybe. Um, I think this was not, maybe careless was a bit too hard word. Maybe I should say, um, yeah, to, 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 in French we would say, go à la cueillette uh, while our king is still unstable, you know? Like uh, to go to, to take fruits. Yes, so. <laughs> You know, in the garden uh, while uh, the wolf is coming. You know. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite uh, uh, an interesting image, but I, I think... I mean, the wolf is there. You see that it's entering your uh, big mansion and garden, and you go to take the fruit uh, outside. The, you say, I come back tomorrow. Like, <laughs> okay, I mean, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> It's but the same. Maria is in a severe time trouble, so let's get back to the actual position on the board. So what, what, what happened after 92? Okay, King G7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was in time trouble, yeah. Knight take F4. 
Queen of six. Queen of six. Mm -hmm. oh, but we analyze this, the same position. Uh, well, it's sort of with the trans no? position, yes. Mm -hmm. Now she will. Yeah. It is stopped here. Now she will play d5, yes? It's exactly what we, we looked. That's exactly this, uh, the position that we analyzed. Now we improved because we first looked the current position and then we came back. <laughs> well, I would say that we are improving because we are seeing a one move tactics. You know, a bit what <laughs> would be maybe nice, it would be to have all the time the, the, the board where the current position is because sometimes, uh, I mean, we are advancing, but it's not the real position sometimes. It's also the first day is always a test for our technical team. Yeah, but so also, it's not also easy for it's them of as well. course, less aesthetical to have two boards at the same time. I mean, sometimes it can be even ugly, so I mean, it's a choice. It's difficult. D5 so d5 played, was yeah. played, we analyzed e5 in this position, and then I think knight e2 is yeah, rather natural. Yeah, I don't want yeah, to exchange because the, knights. As we, we again say, I mean, the, 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 the knight is very loosey here, and there is a big problem on the diagonal. So if you start to take i take, you are losing material because the queen has to leave the diagonal, and then queen d4 check or queen e5 check will win it all. It will win either with knight f6 check, either with queen take b2. So, I mean, it's completely lost here. So you have to play e5. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course, you cannot allow as well the the, the d take e6 uh, pawn structure. I mean, which would be not an horror movie. It would be uh, apocalypse. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Uh, but look at Maria. You know, so she she's, has to play she's fully four. concentrated. But like, look how uh, well. There's so much stress. She knows that her position is. Um, how do you Difficult? see that she has so much stress? Because she makes this with the finger? Or? Yes, no, but I know her. <laughs> Me, I cannot notice. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I, I mean, oh, no, no, no. Je, plie, je plie le doigt, I, I move my finger, I don't see it, so much stress. Well, I've been uh, their captain, actually, for some time. So uh, Anna and Maria played also for... Yeah, Saint Almira Saint knows, uh, I have to say that Almira knows uh, very well three of the players. Uh, she knows very well the two sisters, Mozi Shuk and Umpin Konero, because she played for so many years with them in the same team, uh, Monaco. They, they, they got European uh, chess club title together, and, uh, and uh, so she knows when they are stressed or not. But yeah, I just see that she makes this with the finger. <laughs> How can I know she's stressed? Well, sometimes, yes, I can read them like an open book. Why the finger? Uh, <laughs> Ah, so, so she decided to, t to trade the rooks. Let's wait uh, for the position on the board. And um, she played uh, rook d8. Let's see, let's see. Is it possible? Or she played e5 first? So she played d5. She took on c1. Oof, mm -hmm. computer right. doesn't like it. I see the bar. I can't read what Compi says, but I see the bar. I am a bit uh, afraid for her. What? Now, if it doesn't work, or for which reason? Ah. Ah, but wait, you just said that we cannot allow uh, d takes c6 and she played rook d8 in this position. Why? Because now maybe she noticed that this would lose is due to what? Well, but it doesn't matter because your sec the second move of the vari variation is irrelevant because she was calculating the variation in advance, so she cannot, like she didn't change now her what, opinion 92? now. What, it will be lost or what, the knight? No, there, say sh I go rook b8? there should be a tactical idea uh, behind rook d8. Let's see what, what she yeah. wanted to do after d takes here, c6. Here, rook c6 is completely lost, we agree? I mean, maybe she... Uh, no, what I mean, my, my supposition is that maybe after d5, when she takes, she hopes to play e5 now, which is a much worse version because you have rook c6 coming. I mean, you just play there, the knight is completely trapped, and uh, rook c6 is coming and problems there. So maybe she underestimates this. You, you think that, I think uh, that she, she has an ID tactical course, after rook yes. d8, let's see. Yeah, I called it apocalypse some years ago because I didn't think she would play, otherwise my words would not be so hard. <laughs> so first, just let's have a uh, quick look at what happens after d, ta d takes e6. You know, so we need to... Okay, you said so that this is not possible simply, so let's no, see. I said that if she agrees, the, see, see, if she plays this structure and it works for white, it's terrible. So but the tactical idea is probably rook d4? Yeah, for yes? sure. Mm -hmm. But you always have this e7 move in store, yes? So if, even if you lose a piece, let's say queen e2, 
Yeah, because unfortunately we can't take an e7 mm -hmm. because she will play queen take and queen e4 check. Ah, you mean now? Okay. Because sometimes it's possible to play things like this and e7, but unfortunately here there is this check. And the pawn, you take the pawn and you are completely winning with black. But here there should be some good move. Queen e2, I think queen that's e2, queen e2. We give the... Mm -hmm. we give the and if he takes there... Well, I wanted to play e7, but maybe you queen have... Queen e4 uh, check, no? Yes, queen e4 checks, so uh, we have to be careful as well. Ah, can you take on b2? The yeah, knight no, is hanging. Yeah, I just take okay. on b2, mm -hmm. and now, yeah, unfortunately... Right. No, I, I don't see. speak. Mm -hmm. I don't... Yeah, I see, I see. So, queen b2, of course. Mm -hmm. And you... Yes, and you, you are pinned. You are this pinned, is terrible. Now you have to play this, and this is completely lost, because you are up and down, your king is extremely bad. This is... No chance at all. So Maria was uh, putting all her hopes on uh, d takes is 6 yeah, rook d4. Uh, what did she miss in this variation then? I Let's think see. that she missed, uh, she has not queen no time. Queen she, she knows that she doesn't want to play the game with 30 seconds. And uh, maybe she missed this queen b2. Because we also... We she missed queen e2 b2, in mm -hmm. fact. This. Mm -hmm. she, she thinks that maybe she can cope with the position, but... Of course, there is a move. So, hmm. Is there anything else after d takes c6? Uh, b b otherwise, you are completely lost. Is there anything like this? Ah, even this might be when you are threatening a 96. Okay, you show. take there. To show sometimes. Now I take there. And I have the same thing with queen d4 or queen e5 check coming. Mm -hmm. You can come there, let's say, but this should win easily. Huh? Check. Where do you go? Because knight f6 can be a threat. Igor, sometimes you forget that you are not alone analyzing alone with your computer. Show that after rook c7, you are yeah, threatening knight f6. Yeah, but the computer is too far. I don't see No, it. no, no. <laughs> we should show it for our audience. Uh, rook tell c7, me. Uh, you are threatening knight f6. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, rook c7, let's say I am in a bad day, I play a6. Yes. Then of knight takes e6, six. check. <laughs> so it's, an, then, it's, a, it's an important and point. And uh, this is a pin. This is the idea of rook c7. Is that you have an, an immediate threat, it's knight take e6. And sometimes you have a second threat, let's say the queen moves, I don't know where. Okay, there is knight take e6, but sometimes there is also queen take g6. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, but here it's no sense because knight e6 <laughs> works too. But okay. It's just to show that in the air there are those two things. So after rook c7, yeah, if you go, for example, your e5, now knight e6 check is coming. Because if I was a defense, it's most, in most of the variations. So rook c7 is very annoying, actually, because if the king moves and we take, we have this version in much stronger, much stronger version, because the rook supports e take f7, for instance, and, or rook take f7. And yeah. in many variations, your king is going to be for on, example, the, look, on the you, last file. Yeah, let, let, let's, see, you, let, let's say you go there, I may have such a thing now. I mean, you go there, I may have even this now. Which is, uh, we, we didn't have before. But rook e4? Now I take on f6. Yes, but okay. Let's see. Then g5, I mean. Mm -hmm. just, uh, four, four, three points up, it <laughs> starts to be something. Yeah, so this is, uh, sorry, this is very, this is very serious actually. I mean, rook c7, what's going on? But what happened in the game? Because, uh, what is the actual rook position? Rook c7, okay. she played. Let's concentrate. She played and she took. It is the game. So let's concentrate on the game in the real time because yeah, both, so we both were players already because it was in this time seven. trouble. Uh, he take d5, knight take d5, d5. Oh, it's all over. I mean, queen d4 check, how you will do? You have to do what? Queen d6, only move? Mm -hmm. Whoa, both sisters will lose today. What a first day because what they were probably hoping is to play something solid and draw today, and then they have to white in last three rounds where they can try something. But now already the rhythm changes.
So this first round actually shows that on uh, such short distance, there is no round of observation which you can allow yourself, like for example, in a match for the World Championship title, like you have 12 games. And I have to say one thing. Once I spoke with Gunina about this, and I like a, a lot uh, looking women just because, uh, I mean, uh, like them, I mean, this world cycle with women, because they try much more than men. Just sometimes men, they play so, I mean, uh, they are observing each other all the time. They play passive, they exchange, they make a draw without fight. And it's then they all fight all the time. I like to see this, actually. But uh, this is women's chess, and this cycle is no exception, uh, not an exception. In general, they play like yes. this. It's not exactly those two games. This is an example among... Uh, I mean, there are a lot of decisive games exactly. all the time. When we were doing the commentary for the Cairns Cup, uh, the, the number of the decisive games were, was skyrocketing. We, we had, like, compared, for, the, like, for example, to the Sikkefeld Cup, we had, like, more over the 65%. You have to explain what is this Cairns Cup. Cairns Cup is... It's, a woman, it's the, 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 the wife of uh, Rex, yes? Yes. Um, Cairns Cup is one of the strongest women's events organized in St. Louis. And it was organized once on the, no, know, twice, twice, twice already. It's pretty, it's not a tradition because it was a very good idea and tournament no, was fantastic. It, it is supposed to be a tradition, it's like uh, everything stopped just during the With pandemic, the so yes, ah, of course. Yeah. So they hopefully the tournament is going to be resumed uh, next I think, year. I think it's good because, uh, yeah, like those tournaments, junior tournaments, they are, they are very important, there are a lot of fighting chess and. Uh, and uh, Cairns Cup, yeah, I, lo I love to look it, actually. No, but it's a, it's a very nice story. So I, when we were doing the commentary for the Sikifal Cup, at some point we were, we were looking at the games and we were thinking, so are we going to have one decisive game? And in women's event, like, almost all games are decisive yes, sometimes. So. Yeah, because on men's, uh, men's games, sometimes you see uh, everybody making a draw. Sometimes they are fighting draws, of course. Of huh? course. I mean, but, uh, but okay. But what the, a round? What what can you do after Queen D4? No, it's lost completely. For me, it's completely lost. You have to go where on I don't know. Knight F6 check is coming and Rook F7. I mean. Well, the bo the body language says it all. You know, the late in GG is just uh, she waits for her opponent. No, to I resign. told you this street fighter uh, street fighter style is very dangerous, especially in such short format, you know. It's much less dangerous when you have time to, like, eight games or so. And on your screen, not only you have the actual position on the board, you also have all our sponsors and partners. Let's remind uh, our viewers that the tournament is organized in a prestigious hotel, Hermitage. Yeah, it's so Actually, there were so many tournaments organized in Monaco in the hotel Hermitage, but... Uh, I, I don't think that Bobby Fischer in 1967 played in the Hotel Hermitage, but he had uh, a lot of uh, uh, Monaco Grand Prix, and it has a long-lasting chess tradition. Let's even look how it's beautiful behind the players. I mean, the you have the, the, the not the windows, but the of course, of course. But uh, so the uh, the playing hall is inside of the Hotel Hermitage. Uh, uh, we have the uh, Société de Bain de Mer. The, uh, the the major sponsor of the event. We have our partner Motiva, uh, the art newspaper. So we, there are so many sponsors supporting the, uh, this event and I hope that their number will grow um, while the game is still in progress. And uh, have a look at our beautiful logo, you know, on the side. Uh, yeah, I like on the, very on the much. right Women side. Women Candidates so. logo, it's. Uh, yeah. No, it's a really talented logo. I mean, I know because once I wanted to make some uh, site, internet site and this, and uh, I made a logo, and uh, I was talented also, but this one is even better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, this red and, uh, and, uh, and uh, black, and the uh, woman, she has the, uh, the rose, crown. yes? In no, the crown. A crown, mm -hmm. crown, I didn't see it from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in red. And very, very nice logo. And the art exchange. I mean, it's a very nice logo, really. One of the best I saw, actually. So it was developed uh, here. And, and I am very hard when I say such <laughs> things. So it means it's the truth. 
And of course, like uh, white and red uh, chess squares, it's uh, symbolical of the national colors of Monaco. But I like also the general background on the, on the screen that we see. Artistically speaking, uh, I, I like it. So let's get back uh, the position um, on our screens because ah, the, the, the game is still in progress. In uh -huh. So what happened? King H6. So check, King H6. No, she exchanged. She means G5 or what? No, but what happened if... Um, G5. No, no, first of all, why can't I take the piece? Yeah, yeah it was not winning at once. Mm -hmm. So G5 check, it was not made or what? She missed the mate, no? What you have to do, take. Now I guess queen is reject, yes? So why can't you take on b2? <laughs> ah, queen d5 check, I uh, forget the selection. Uh, <laughs> of I course, so <laughs> it's no, the no. end of the day, yes, and then uh, no, you're fine. Okay, it's the beginning of the day, you should take on b2, then they will play for another <laughs> five hours. <laughs> then check, yeah, I guess. The king cannot escape, I think, isn't it made soon? King h5, you have to go, knight f4 check, I mean, good luck, yeah. G5 check was completely, uh, was devastating. No, I mean, she missed a G5, no? Why she took? Because she thinks that, uh, well, she wins another pawn and she's going to transpose, uh, like, in a completely win a rook end game if you play knight D3. Yeah, but here at G5, will it change something or not? Maybe you don't lose the pawn. Because you have to take. I can play take. queen. Uh, yes. I now at least I attack the guy. I mean, uh, just uh, I win the tempo, but it's important in such things. It's I not keep, so easy. I, mean. I keep forgetting that queen d5 is a check Compli. Compli, because Compli. I wanted to take on f7, but queen d5 is a check Why and I changed the queen. <laughs> what says? No, but here knight d3, knight f5. I mean, this is. Uh, yeah, but you have only one pound down. I mean, it's not uh, like uh, no, you, no, you no, resign. I mean, okay, you move. Okay, see what. I'll check. I'll I'll there, yes, no. no, 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 I will take on f7 first. Okay. Pardon my French. <laughs> yes, but now I take there. Where do you take? Ah, rook she took b2 before. She can afford to take on a2 now. <laughs> Is it so easy? I mean, knight d3, knight f4? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. She had to play g5, I think. But okay. So I mean. g5 was made, yes? Let's see. Just. Uh, and g5, I might move before here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So g5, I think so, no? king g5. Mm -hmm. You have to take queen and queen is check. I like. You have to prevent king h6 back, mm -hmm. in fact. Because queen g4 looks very obvious, but you give king h6. Nothing is clear then. I mean. And the problem is that you have no time to take there due to queen d5 check. Once again. Okay, so here queen is check, then I mean. If king f5. It's made immediately due to rook f7 check. So you have to go here or here. I mean, here it's made due to queen h6 check. So you have to go queen king h1 knight and then knight f4 check. Resign, I think. You have to go where here. First of all, now I can take on f7, but g3, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that so the, that was a forced mate, actually. Yeah, okay, maybe it's still winning now, but... Yes, but, but, okay. there is always a but. You know, when you start missing those moves, and uh, as you rightfully said, we are going to transpose... Uh, ah, she won this is the position of the board. You know, when, if there would there, be there another is endgame... There but, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still much huh, for it. But how did she manage to win both um, pawns? So she didn't take on d6, so what happened? Okay, ah. because when she check, okay, f f7, you cannot affor mm -hmm. afford to to give. I mean, and you don't have this move again mm -hmm. due to this check. Yeah. So you cannot afford to. So what what's the move now? So she played exactly here, f6, and mm -hmm. now she gave the second point. Now rook d2, she is trying to play some knight d1. Mm -hmm. 
But they can always play maybe h4, knight d1, I will have knight h3. Well, and yeah. with the idea of playing g5 and rook, rook h7. King or, g3 somewhere mm -hmm. on f3. Yeah. Now they are also mating that. Huh? You may have also moves play. like this. Mm -hmm. You also may have moves like h4, let's say. But it's uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, but the second move is yes. different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to play maybe this. And uh, not here, I'm sorry, I wanted the other way. Knight, I mean, knight here. Ah, you knight want here, to start with knight this Yeah, but it's too slow, yeah? I wanted like this, in fact. Knight here. Mm -hmm. And knight here, maybe. But why can't I play knight d3? Ah, you just. And now when you check here, I go there. And in fact, you, you allow me to, to improve my position for mating that. Mm -hmm. It should be winning. I'm not sure what is the most precise, but probably knight h4 is more human. And I think that the players are still in the time trouble. What? what I don't know, h4, and does it allow h5? A G5, sorry. Ah, you mean so if I take, you take, and then. Uh, With the king, maybe. We well. exchange another pawn. I don't know, because, yeah, I exchange, but it should be some mate, I mean, F3, mm -hmm. something. Some rook H7, H5 checkmate, you know. Let's see. Because here, black's only hope is to trade many pounds and then to try to survive, and that one moment to what? yes we just have we don't have the diagram on the board anymore okay. we are concentrating concentrating on the live position uh, because okay, okay. players are very short on time uh, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, what move is it right now like um, it's move 33 okay so, so seven, seven moves, moves left, left to to reach the the, the time control. move and the time control but they have 30 seconds, each move, yeah? So I was right, h4 was played, once yeah, again. Yeah, but was it the best move? This is another story. <laughs> I'm not story. sure, I'm not was sure. Was played, yes, but... <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the best move, you know, but... <laughs> this is, uh, two different things. <laughs> well, I've never, you know... You guess the move, if it was a, co uh, um, a contest, uh, who guessed the most the moves, then you are, you are in a good shape. <laughs> But I'm still torn by doubt after 40 years of playing chess. I still don't know, you know, it's like because I very rarely analyze with the computer. So it's almost like all at the end I will check the line, but uh, when I analyze no, no, myself... No, no, you are a good intuitive player. I mean, you always was and uh, no doubt about it. But, uh, but sometimes now concrete chess is so important. Of course. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> So before the tournament, like this year, before the French Championship... Uh, because you didn't play for a long time, I Yes, well, huh? I didn't yes. play for six years, but the only thing that I did, you know, said, okay, theory is maybe not important, I will catch up during the tournament. I was working, working like for six, eight hours during the Which day. Which is very bad, huh? I Yes, I know. It's but very bad. There is hard, but this is very bad. No, no, this. but I'm not proud. It's just there is no other way. The game yeah, otherwise yeah, will not um, forgive yeah. you. But I was doing a lot of tactical exercises. That's what the, the only chance for me to survive uh, the competitive. Uh, you did this time. before tournament. Yeah? Yes, uh, before tournament for a month. Because if you do yes. this during tournament, then every coach will run at you. <laughs> and so. But I actually think that sometimes it's also a good idea when you wake up and just to solve a few. Uh, you know me. What I positions. was doing, I was doing completely nonsense. I was doing uh, like three or four very very hard sudoku when I was playing in tournaments sometimes. <laughs> and I was coming to my game, I was so exhausted, you know, I could not calculate anything. I was good at the sudoku, huh? but <laughs> after my game was completely trash. <laughs> no, no, it's very bad, don't do this. I mean, you save energy, uh, you save energy for the, for the game. It's the most important. You should not work eight hours like, like her, do sudoku like me, this you don't do. <laughs> So, uh, G5 is on the board, uh, they uh, exchanged uh, one of the last pawns left for black on the board. And this is a good technique, only, yeah, the problem is that you may lose this pawn, I mean, like rook a6 check. Yes, king g7, you cannot take on g5 immediately, so you should prepare it. So, maybe ah, I will rook on f5. Yeah, I will put rook on f5. Ah, but then a2 is then game. No, but rook a6, check, king g7, rook a5, and I will take with the rook on g5, and I wish check. No? Mm, you mean it if doesn't I go work? king f6? Rook f5? 
1987. And now I take on G5. Uh, G5 too. <laughs> oh, it's still hanging. <laughs> and maybe sometimes you lose knight e3 check, reverse way, and knight take f5. Be careful if you take with the knight. Yes, so let's show the variation. Is. Of we course, let's put the position check. on the board. Mm -hmm. Now we were thinking this. Mm -hmm. Rook a5. Rook a5, this is not clear at not all, because clear. the problem is when you will take there, you risk to lose the a2 pawn. So here I was thinking this. But for me, it's completely winning, even though you check. I will give you the a2 pawn. I go here, let's mm -hmm. say. Well, compete plus 250, I don't think it's completely winning, because if I manage to... Okay, maybe it's winning. I don't know, this, this. No, knight no, this, yeah, this is what we were speaking about. That's what we wanted about. to show, yes. Now we do it in the reverse way, you know? <laughs> no, 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 the... please don't do this. No, so rook take, rook we were speaking about. Rook and now rook a2. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you can still hope for something, maybe king g3, right? I would not resign here, I would play two moves, probably I would lose, but... Yes, what we have to explain is that if black manages to sacrifice this lonely knight for the... Two, two, pounds, two pounds, it will be a draw. It is a theoretical draw. So it, I mean, if black managed to give his knight against those two pounds, it's a draw. Rook against king and rook and knight is a draw. And not so difficult. I had it a couple of times. Only one who managed to lose, I think it was Judith against Gary. And it was a big scandal at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember how, but... Uh. So that's why Igor actually said that I think Gary took resign. back a move, I think. He took back a move or something. And it was a scandal, you see? Okay, let's come back. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's not the position on the board. Let's that's uh, the position on the board. Mm -hmm. So she played our variation. Which is not a good sign. <laughs> 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 I have to say, no, she... But I think those, are, those moves are very natural. So uh, I, I think especially in the time trouble, you try to... Well, it's very important to get away from every possible fork. And you are trying to take the pawns with checks. What happens here? She has to play here, huh? I guess. Me, I would play king f6, what else? Mm -hmm. But maybe then I can play a4, a4 and take the pawn on can the I next Can I do the same rook uh, somewhere? Rook, uh, rook a2? Or? Let, but let's put it on the board, of course. Maybe king f6? No. Because we are always. Uh, king f6 yeah, first? We are always a bit upset that we lose this pawn, so we try not to give it so easily. So rook a2? But rook a2. Mm -hmm. And now I may play this one. Ah, knight c3 is coming. Of course, black should be lost completely, but it's the good direction she takes. I mean, to trade all pawns, it's a good thing to do. But on the, on the other hand, if you will play knight c3, knight d4, then your knight is going to be so far away from like those pawns, so maybe then I can take on g5 and uh, transpose it to another win and end game. Yeah, probably. So she's still thinking, yes? After king of six is on the board and uh, Li Tingji is thinking. She has one minute, 30 seconds left. Against one minute thirteen. And a few moves left till the time control. Oh, I like very much this logo. Really, I mean, really talented. And now we froze. So <laughs> a bad mistake, so I've made a few. Just in case this is Queen my target. <laughs> Yeah, what? Yeah, well... Because, uh, <laughs> Say <point>. something. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. <laughs> the time she makes this with the end, I don't understand. <laughs> Just okay, uh. It's like, you know, on a, on a date, you know, sometimes these are awkward silences and, and you don't know if you should, you should say something, if you're supposed to say something. So it's like, uh, you know, you uh, yeah, She makes the chef not take the case. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the conductor, so yes, yes. I like have in opera, and I have to sing. Yes. You know? <laughs> okay, so 
Well, I can sing, but you know, that's not the point. So. I have to say something, but I, uh, we say it already, no? This <laughs> position. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to say more, it's the position we had. Okay, five, yes, king f6. She needs to make a move. She played She's knight c3. Ah, she, played knight c she played king g3. Mm -hmm. She didn't play our a4 or anything. And now it's losing completely. It's a blunder or what? No. Maybe it was never winning. Maybe king g3 was a very accurate move, yeah? Ah, and now she can take some g5 uh, and, and uh, knight e4 four. is the threat, so you, you are forced to trade the rooks then. And the problem is that if you play rook d3 check, you don't attack anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can check there to go out from the pin, but the problem is you can't take anymore because now the rook is not there to support the knight. And after rook a2, and rook a2, then, then it's completely winning. Yeah, she will resign then. Mm -hmm. I guess she will resign, yeah. No, no, no you can play rook a2, but then this same game is completely lost, probably. She took on a2. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now she has to take, yeah. Knight h7 check, maybe. No, oh. I wanted to try knight e4, but then knight e4 check. Yes. <laughs> Don't do this, because then, <laughs> then you will not draw. In the time travel, <laughs> it is possible. In bullet. <coughs> In bullet, maybe. <laughs> Almira wanted, uh, you know, a very nice trick, check. <coughs> Should I show or not? Check, check. The point is that here she wants us to take. <coughs> <coughs> but in fact, it's, it's check. It's the problem. So. I have to stop my jokes because uh, <laughs> you can't handle <laughs> them. I <laughs> feel. <coughs> she cannot handle my She almost. Uh, no, I, just <laughs> I don't know. Oh, After so many hours, she, yeah, she, sometimes. She, she, she likes breath. <laughs> and she starts to laugh. Well, that is just the first day. <laughs> uh, imagine. No. So, uh, don't try it at home. No, this night no, before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you... You almost ought to kill yourself with your, your own joke. With night before <laughs> check. <you know? laughs> Okay, so let's see the game. Let's be a bit serious. So check here. Um. Normally, it's a matter of technique. Normally, only it's just completely winning with those two connected pa pass pawns. But as there is no other pawns, you only have to be careful, as we said, that Black cannot trade the knight against the two pawns. Okay, Igor, um, the players have reached uh, time control. We will take a short break and we will be yeah, back. Because she will not resign right now. She of course, will she will try to uh, defend this position for a while. Uh, of course, it's the matter of technique now, so we will be back in five minutes. Okay.
And we are back. Uh, Almira Skripchenko, yours truly, together with uh, Igor Alexandro Natav, since yes, you have two written. names. Yes, <laughs> Finally, we can uh, see it on the screen. Um, today we commentate the, um, the first round, the inaugural round of the FIDE Ladies Candidates Tournament. We have two matches. Um, in the first match, Hampi Konero beat uh, Anna Muzichuk, and she is leading. And she leveled the score in their like uh, lifetime uh, all over our school. Yeah, she was plus one. Uh, Anna Muzichuk, yes. she lost to that, so... And in the second match, Lei Tinji is playing against Muzichuk Maria. She has white pieces and she is on the verge of winning her first game Okay, she well. missed some mate in the late middle game, but she is still completely winning normally. Despite some small technical problems. You still think that there are a few technical difficulties here? No, objectively not. But I mean, we, 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 we think that the only chance for black is in case they manage to sacrifice the knight against the two pounds, but it's unlikely to happen normally. Well, it's not very realistic. I don't Especially at this see. level, they know it as well. So. so how do you advance your pounds then? Because we need to find uh, well a way to win to convert the advantage. So how do you proceed here? Because you cannot play g5. I will take your rook and f5. F3, uh, no. <coughs> F3. Then well, I will have to play somewhere knight g2, and hope for the best. And then rook f1. Knight f4 check maybe. And then knight h5 something. Mm -hmm. Then f3. Let's start with f3. Let's put it on the board. Mm -hmm. Knight d2. To Knight have an eye on the guy here. Mm -hmm. Knight f4. King it's already seven. a mistake, right? Why is it a mistake? Mm, I don't know. Knight h5 check. Mm -hmm. Now what? King h7. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So now can we push here? Don't 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 forget there are a couple of tricks there. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's say I play here. Now don't play this. Don't <coughs> play this. Check and mate. <laughs> oh, Fren this is such a nice position. French school. <laughs> <laughs> such things I see fast. <laughs> so uh, the only tricks that are left. So you have to be careful while converting your advantage, you have to find the perfect setup yeah, in order to Yeah, but here probably there is rook f7 check, all this, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm jo just joking, but I see you attempt like this, so... I don't know if this works, actually. No, probably you have to play rook a7, I mean, something like this, huh? And to wait, you know? Can you go there, no? With knight of three check here, no? Okay, the other eight, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'll check you. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, what, it's draw, what? You go there? Then I will check you many, many times. Okay, until well. Until the end. <coughs> I'll say go here. Mm -hmm. Check again. I go here. Again. Yeah, but okay, what, what is your king doing on b6? Okay, let's say we'll go somewhere. Uh, I come back there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you win this position without the help Technical of your king? Problem, probably. What you will bring there? Um, well, it's not easy to defend it either, so let's try... Um, Okay, I don't want to move my knight. Let's try something like the rook on the A file somewhere. Rook A2, Rook A1, something like this. Okay. okay yeah, mm -hmm. So, how do you advance here? You know, this position, especially like if it will get to here, might get you frustrated. Yeah, because here you will get something like this, and you always have an eye on the guy here. Mm -hmm. And king g6. And king g6, already is threatening to take. And then it's draw. Mm -hmm. So your king cannot, like, travel. There are far. some two, three tricks, you know, technically. 
Let's see. They play like this. Mm. Ah, King H7, Maria. Start. That's exactly what I said, no? <laughs> it's my position. <laughs> no? No, I was thinking that we started with King G7. I was not sure. Okay. Yes. Okay, maybe, but it's the same defense. Mm. So, what would be uh, the most precise here. What did we try here? Knight h5, yes? King g6? Mm -hmm. Maybe knight h3 or something. Not that the knight is there. But your knight was on h3. Last game? Yes. Yeah. No, no, it was on h3. It just... Ah, yes. Yeah, so I will not repeat. I wanted knight to show it with king h5. Uh, king h5 there is with h1 anyway. Hmm. Oh, maybe then knight d3. I was thinking about transferring the knight to e5. Where it, it protects, uh, where it protects the f3 pawn at the same time uh, takes away the g6 square. Try knight d3 and knight e5. Or knight e6 as well. <coughs> okay, king g7. Okay, knight e5. That's the position that I want to achieve, and then king g5, and then uh, there, rook f7, and to push the pawn. Okay, 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 seven, not yet. Mm -hmm. King g5. Okay, wait, maybe not king g5, because then I know you okay, will, seven, you know, you will have this trick, trick, yes, of course. So. <laughs> I, just, I show, I show. Yes, let's show it. You know, I am... But I will have to make a move here, so I cannot... You can play four Yes, I can play four here, but you will play knight e4, king h4 back, so... Maybe I should start with a four. In blitz I try rook e6, but... Mm -hmm. no, you have rook h5 still. So there are a few technical difficulties. Yeah, yeah. So what did she try? Because I think it's uh, she Marie's moves. She played 96, mm -hmm. my move. So what is the difference if you play king g6 here? Where do you want to put your knight? Ideally. You want to play something maybe like uh, g no, but king g6, I do king not allow you. Mm -hmm. I do not allow you to play g5. Okay, then I play. I understand that then you want to play g5, rook f6, f4, uh, and then it's completely lost. Right. Actually, we have to show it. We are, we are trying to prevent uh, this. Setting. Yeah, in fact, the point <coughs> is that this move prevents this move because this move is, we, would be winning. I mean, due to some check there. And then f4, and everything is protected. Even, and then you, yeah. even g6 here, so. Yes, but uh, okay, of course, the, the, there is king tech. So, we d as black, uh, we have to prevent g5. I think so. So, king g6, let's mm -hmm. say. Now what? Ah, can you play knight the fate here and, and then g5? Next. Mm -hmm. Probably she wants like this. I think that she wants this. Mm -hmm. King somewhere. Yeah, now this. Now you have to go here. Sort of a triangulation, but um, with a knight. Now you have to bring your knight back. You know, like sometimes in the pawn end games, you. Yeah, but I will yes. do the same with k seven. <coughs> I will close. But then you bring your knight back. Now you go with on the other side, knight d seven, knight d five. Okay, let's say go here. Ah, rook is six, and your idea I cannot play knight d five because I can take rook e five. No. Yeah, on a bad day it works. <laughs> <laughs> now I take and check. Always be careful to such things, but of okay. course. Uh, now you bring the king. <coughs> what? Yeah. Ah, king h5 with idea of playing knight e5, of course. Knight e5, you would always play here. Huh? So let's say I go. Uh, 
No, but then I gradually uh, I um, improved my position. Then I can play maybe knight g4, rook f6, and you, you have less and less squares for your king. This is low, yeah, if I want. Where? What did you do? I made this. How do you protect? After ah, king h5, but then you've chosen. Uh... Oh, but it's terrible, this. <coughs> what a trick. But how do you know that this is a draw? I check. If you go here, I check. And if you go here, I play here, and you can't protect. Yes, but okay, don't play king h5 then. <laughs> yes, so, knight d7, knight rook e6. Okay, what she played, let's mm -hmm. see. So this, this, I should play this. Okay. Ah, but I also, I think, yes, king h5 is a, is a very strong move because I just thought that now you can trade uh, and you your... Space, yeah? and No, but you, your pawn is just... And now your pawn G, is G5, just going, G6 yeah, of course. And, uh, no, no, it's very strong. <coughs> okay, three was bad, I think. You had to take space, yeah? But anyway, space she could contest. And also, you cannot take okay, because you have, you have you knight g5. Now you mm -hmm. have to play what you have to. No, the point is that you cannot play knight take f3. Because yeah. rook f3, knight g5. Yeah, oh. because now you take there. You take, and now, bad surprise, knight g5 check, and you will win with this knight and the pawn. This is completely winning. Mm -hmm. So. But if you don't take, then you play g5 and you're if like. If you don't take you now, let's say you play run. here. Now the point is that the knight is still restricted by the pawn on f3. You know, you cannot advance, so I go g5, g6, check, and rook f8 mate is the threat. So he has to play, let's say, like this, check, this, and now this should be made somewhere. King h6, let's say. Why can't you play g7 and rook f8? Ah, but in force, maybe. No, I prefer g7, rook f8 now. I prefer like this, if you don't mind. <coughs> I want to, to finish the game before, so I don't want to give this one. Okay. So now the position is... Yeah, it's completely uh, lost. It's completely very, very strong winning. move what she did. Mm -hmm. King h5 is, uh, is a perfect move, I think, yeah. in this position. So, rook e3... The only problem is that what she didn't... Ah, yeah, rook, rook e3, she was attacking, so she prevented our g5, g5, g6. So... Yeah, but now it's the it's the king who is coming. Yeah, let's say she goes there. Can you play king g6 here? Probably. Mm -hmm. Not sure. You have to go well to go. Let's say here or here. Mm. But now you can even play rook f7 and rook g7 and. Uh, and mate next. Yes. You try check and if this knight h7 mate and if this. Knight of seven mate. So you have to go here. Now you just what? You just this and this. Mm. Ah, knight h seven and knight f six. No, mm. There is no rook uh, who can give. Uh, ah, so rook a six, knight f six, of course. So yeah, you want Arabian <coughs> mate, knight f six check and rook h seven mate. Let's say you play here. Check. So called Arabian mate. Okay, I should be lost, huh? So what? Check, king. I she didn't play yet, yeah? I she played. Knight like g5 check. Now, she has what, 25 minutes left? She will uh, resign, I think, it's very soon. And Igor, when you were preparing for the candidates uh, tournament as a coach, uh, when did you start preparation? Like Very six early. months in advance? How many? Like yeah, what is consistent the consistent work frame? and uh, yeah, it depends because we prepared. Uh, yeah, when we prepared in 2011, it was not the same than in 2000. Yeah, we prepared before actually, much before. Even like a year before? You started like the... Uh... I don't know, it depends when you learn, at which stage you learn that you qualify, because some they, they learn at the last tournament, some they learn, so... Yeah, yeah, we start fast. General openings and also against each, each one with both colors, what you do, some ideas. 
Okay, but then I had another question since, um, well, this is a very particular format of the candidates tournament. We have matches and um, <clears throat> throughout the history of uh, women's chess and the world championship matches, the, the format was not always the same. So there were the candidates and yeah. there were matches, you know, so it changed. There was interzonal, uh, you had the um, knockout. So let's say compared to the candidates tournament, if you like would be playing those tournaments, is it easier, do you think, to prepare against one particular opponent or you would prefer to prepare like for the candidates, like a tournament of 13 rounds? It's easier against one. So it's easier against... That's actually was uh, No, because uh, actually I had, the, I had the case in 2011, he played against Kramnik Raja. Mm -hmm. So it was against one guy. And uh, in 2013, it was a world tournament. So, I mean, it was much easier in... Uh, I mean, it was tough and easier because the same, it's not many games, it's four games, it was the same format exactly. But at the same time, you can prepare against a very particular opponent in depth, you can even have his psychological... And then for the rest, you prepare less because <coughs> uh, first you want to pass the first time. Yes, but then if you lose the match, then you, like, there are no chances left, whereas like in the candidates tournament, which is very long, well, if you lose of a game, course. you can still win the tournament. Yeah, I remember Mamedyanov when he started very badly in, uh, I think, 2016. He started very badly and uh, on the end he had some chances to qualify. I mean, he started with minus two or minus three. And then he won later, much later, one game and then another, then another. And, and uh, yeah, of course, there you, are, you go for uh, It was this terrible uh, match against Kramnik where... Uh, <laughs> Well, at some point he should qualify and Kramnik pushed the clock and the clock stopped and Arbiter couldn't, uh, I mean Raja won the first time, I mean they made draw, they made four draws in the normal games. It was Raja both against Kramnik 2011 match and they made four draws in the no normal, normal games. Then he, it was, I think it was two rapid games. They made draws against two rapid games. They made draws, then it was the blitz. First session of blitz, Raja won first first game. He drew first blood uh, with white, and second game is completely draw. I mean, it's just like some kind of fortress. And then I think there are 15 minutes left each. Kramnik pushes the clock fast, uh, strong, and the clock stops. Simply, the clock stops when they are in time travel. And, and like then arbiter <coughs> doesn't the know how to. Yeah. Uh, just okay. for stops, and the arbiter doesn't know how to <laughs> how to put back, so he has to wait five minutes one, five minutes the other. And then <laughs> at the resume, Kramnik gives five pounds in a row and makes and breaks the fortress. You know, <laughs> Raja was blue and uh, lost the game. And then next game, next series of blitz, uh, Raja plays some King's Indian and he outplays Kramnik, Kramnik offers the draw and Raja, Raja declines and the game is very tough and Raja was better almost, to, I think he loses the game finally, so upset and last game he was I think absolutely winning and he, Kramnik defended hero, heroically and made the draw and finally he gets out due to this stupid clock, I was completely blue <laughs> in two. So. Yes, but that's And why it was then Grichuk who won against... Uh, it was when Gelfand won the candidates yes. in 2011. And then the, he played the match. He I mean, Grichuk beat Kramnik second round. Grichuk beat Aronian first round. Aronian was among favorites <coughs> at the time. Uh, he was extremely strong. It was when he was around 28, 30 or so. And Grichuk then beat Kramnik. It was a very funny match. I mean, Grichuk made draw in five moves uh, all the games with White. And he beat him in the tie break with black. I mean, even tie break, he made draw in five moves with white. And finally, uh, Gelfand uh, against Grichuk. It was this match, six games, and he lost the last game. I think Grichuk, it was two and a half, two and a half. And yeah, it was good memories. But of course, the way Raja went out, I didn't like. But yes, but that's what I wanted to say. That uh, it's very difficult to keep the things under control. Of course. Uh, well, while you're playing all these wild games, and especially when everything is decided uh, during the tie breaks. And uh, well, as I remember, Boris Gelfand went on playing um, the World Championship match against Vishana, ah, yes. and he was very close also 
uh, to winning the title and it didn't go his way. Um, so Actually, finally, quite many matches, only the last one, huh? not uh, with tiebreak. So finally, you have to um, also the keep one your cool, on. no, <laughs> till the end. So you don't have to, you don't have to say like this position is winning. You know, you're relaxed. You know, you no, have, you to, have to, win. To, to win. win the game and, uh, first. Of course. So uh, she didn't play rook e8 because of uh, rook f7, I think, and um, white went. To you on. only have to avoid the tricks. Yeah. There are there are some, so you have to avoid them. So let's get the position uh, on the screen we have it, because yeah. I think that no, no, we have the actual like the, the real time board and uh, yes, this is the um, the live position. So okay, she she is threatening rook f8 mate. So you have to play. Uh, rook so you are threatening this. You have to play rook b8. No choice. You can no, check you first. can get okay. give check first. Okay, now normally you have to go what this. She will play normally here, otherwise mm -hmm. it's rook h have mate. And now what we will do? Rook h5, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would also, I would start with g5 and then bring the rook to c5. Yeah, mm -hmm. So maybe uh, anything is possible here. Okay, knight f6 check is clearly the move. King f8 and now... But no. can you play rook f6 also? Because your king is uh, helpless, so you can trade the rooks here. Rook f6, rook f6, knight f6. Yeah, we'll play knight f6, but mm -hmm. I'm too afraid that the knight gives itself. <laughs> <laughs> At least I keep one rook in case. In the sacrificial animal, so let's see. Knight f6 is okay, on Okay, knight f6, king f8. And they played rook c5. Knight d6 now, she will play. And now at rook d5. Knight f7. It will continue a bit. Well, I want to start with g5. Ah, but to you have also, no, no, but you also knight d7 check. I mean, just over. You tried both mate and knight d7 check. No, if knight d6, yes, I have knight d7. That's why now it's not possible. So let's say knight e3, maybe. No. Rook c5. But why she didn't play immediately? Uh, because pinned. Mm -hmm. If knight d6, yeah, that's what you say. Yeah, I wanted to play knight d7 check, but little problem technically is that I'm pinned. So the point is that after this, if you go knight d6, you are not pinned anymore. And now, of course, we check and we take. So after this. It'd be knight e3, the only chance. Yeah. I, I, well, I threaten knight g4. And now you have your tricks with <coughs> check and check and take the queen. Because here we want to play this mm -hmm. mate, and now I, I, I check again. And this is ball. So Ah, but after knight e3 you have rook c8 and rook e8, yes? This is, uh, you win a knight. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. If you play knight e3, the knight is lost, in fact. You don't play this because it's draw. You play check, and now you play check, and now you take the knight next move. Sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why she put knight on d2, but knight on d2 is terrible, restricted by everything. Now my stuff is maybe not... Uh, my rook c7 makes sense now, no? What do you do here? It's completely lost, no? Rook f7, check next. Mate. Yeah. I mean, and this is not a draw. I mean, of course, you have those two and you have the knight, so there is no. So what she played? Now rook c7, she would play. She just look if there is no last trick. Uh, she's uh, she's um, right to take her time with white because. The only way you can spoil is to fall into a trick here, since many moves. So. Yes, but rook c7 is on the board. Yeah. Which was not working after my knight e3. Here it's working. Yes, and Maria resigns. She resigns. So we yeah, have um, a second decisive game. Second of the decisive round. game of the day. <coughs> I mean, it starts very strongly. Very, very strongly. So the players um, sign their score sheets. So. 
And but you can also see the chief flower. arbiter on your screens, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this CTEC D5 took her out of the book and uh, she just dominated from, from the whole game. I mean, she played very good, this Chinese uh, player, she played very good. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for following this round with us. Uh, the tournament starts uh, with a big bang, you know, yes, yes, two, yes. Um, two wins with white pieces. The big bang like the one for the hearse. <laughs> yes. We <laughs> <So laughs> start says humanity. So yes, what, what else? Yes. <laughs> so uh, Lei Tingji uh, beat Anna Mizuchuk and Hampi Konero won against Maria Mizuchuk. So we remind you that the matches are played, uh, well, there are only four games. Uh, so um, each game is extremely game, important. Each game is extremely important and, um, well, we will see tomorrow. Muzichuk sisters will have white pieces tomorrow and uh, they will, they have a difficult night ahead of them. They have to... Uh, yeah, because there is the stress, there is also, the, the, they have to find something to play for tomorrow because you, we don't know their, their openings. Maybe they are playing something very solid with black. I don't know what they do, uh, Konero and... And lay, so. Yes, but for example, you might have a particular strategy beforehand, like before the match, but now that you've lost your first game with black, so you have, you might have three options. Like, uh, you to go all in, to, but to the match in, may stop very fast. Or, yes, I understand this, of course, but you, uh, you need to be probably a little bit more aggressive. Of course. Okay, so we will we'll see you tomorrow, the same time, same place, and well, I'm looking forward to more jokes from Igor. Yeah, I will uh, recharge battery. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow I come in better form. So we'll see you tomorrow. Take care, Thank, thanks a lot, and have a good evening. I'm here with Humpy Conero after her first victory uh, in the Women's Candidates. Congrats. Thank you. Um, so, first of all, what is your general impression on the game? Yeah, today it was a big surprise for me. I didn't expect uh, Queen's Comet accepted from her. Uh, well, um, I just uh, played some interesting Bishop E3 and DC5. Uh, taking on bishop h2, king h1, bishop e5 is uh, quite risky for black because black king is getting struck in the center. I felt like maybe um, after queen c6, king e7, knight d2, she shouldn't have taken the h2 pawn. I felt like she should play queen b7 to force the queen exchange. But okay, it's very slight, like I can take on b7, bishop b2, f6, knight c4, I, I, I still continue with some pressure. Um, once she took the h2 pawn, uh, I'm very comfortable. Uh, in, in, the, in the final position, I think knight d6 was very important because knight e5, uh, once knight e5, black has f6, knight c6, queen b5, that's the tricky move. Mm -hmm. So once I saw knight d6, uh, it, it was quite easy to play. Yeah, yeah and in general, if, even if you didn't know the opening, uh, what was your, your reaction to that? Did you, did you start to panic or did you just uh, go? No, not really, because being white, it was quite pleasant for me. So I just played it, yeah. Okay, uh, thanks a lot, Humpy, and uh, hopefully you will win other games. Thank you.